Good morning, everyone. Now, let's just make this short and sweet in that aspect. I can't say I'm really on here to preach nothing about Spurs at the moment. What is there to really talk about football at the moment? I'll tell you what there is to talk about. Whether we like it or not, whether people say we're raw, you're just jealous, you're just this and that, I don't care. I couldn't care less. These idiots, they did it again. They screwed it up again. They totally cocked it up again. And I love every minute of it. And I will dig at these. I'll, I'll watch my language for about 15 minutes. I'll dig at this lot for as long as it comes. Because why this was all going on with Pochettino. And we was doing something. They was on our case the whole time. We never we never win nothing. We never do this. You've bottled it here. You've bottled it there. And they're right. We did. We bottled it and everything. No matter how good Poch was. And Poch done a very good job for us. We still got nothing to show for it. Yes, we was in a Champions League final. It's better than what they've done with him so far. But, so let's just rip into these pricks a bit before I go and we'll have a chat about Spurs and a chat about a few things. But I, wanted, I do want to talk about that game last night just for the sheer fact that they've, they've done it again. So, my first guest, bring on. Yes. Queen Ellie, how are we doing? I'm really well and I'm so happy to be here, to be the... Uh the protagonist against Arsenal. Yes, we're going to give it to them. Come on. <laughs> right, and my next guest coming in here, Charlie. Yes, guys. From Holland, how are we doing? Well, it, well it, this wasn't the best weekend, but now Arsenal's lost twice in the span of a week. So, I mean, like, this is the best week I've ever had. It's like a holiday. You're telling me. Now, what? Well, one thing I can definitely say with this year, it's definitely made me a bit easier at the moment, yeah, because... <laughs> if I go back about four days, I said it on here, I said it on other things. I was terrified to play Arsenal, scared like they've really been pulling some good stuff off. 
even muscled out games and that, and their style of play is going to rip us to pieces. I still don't think our style of play is good to play them with. But after they lose that game to Villa, I'm like, hmm, I'm still terrified of playing. But there was one thing I didn't know. I knew they had to play Munich, and then I knew they had to play Wolves, but I didn't know they had to play Chelsea as well. So, okay, I've gone down from terrified now to like, yeah, I'm still a bit scared of playing them. <laughs> but now I've just seen them get banged up by Munich. They are broken, mate. Now what we see is in the next couple of games, how they do with Wolves and Chelsea. But by the end of that game, they look physically, mentally drained and broken. They've now got, they've now got to play Wolves and Chelsea with this mentality and see if they can really get their head back together. And then they've got to play us. So I can't yeah. say I'm so scared anymore, if I tell you the truth. What about you two? Well, I've got the same. I feel like it will be a hard game still. <clears throat> Sorry, guys. It will be a hard game still, but it won't be easy, of course, because it's a North London derby. You never, never know. easy. Never easy. I think how they're playing now. I, I'm a bit. I'm actually still a bit scared because they always seem to turn up at the North London derby, and there's always a way bigger clash than this is because that's like got all the tension, got all the all the people like waiting forward to it, looking forward to it, like all this stuff. So I think it still will be like a draw. I, I'm not. I, it hasn't really changed my perspective on the game because it's still the North London derby is a whole different section of the uh, football games. I feel like, and them losing against Bayern, them losing against Aston Villa has nothing really to do for me with the North London derby. So I'm still a bit afraid. I think how we play, we we're a bit open, but I don't think we'll lose. I think we'll draw. And looking at those games, maybe even a win. Okay, right, Ellie, I'll come to you in a sec. I just need to say hello to a few people in the crowd, in the crew, okay. whatever you want me to call them. Lily White Lane, big up Dan in the chat, big up to you, mate. Hope you're doing well. Tony Rodriguez, as always, without fail, big up Dan in the chat, big up to you too, mate. Love your opinions on here. You're one of the people that says it how it is, as far as I'm concerned. And Nick, what you're saying there, they waited seven years to be undone by Eric Dyer. That is another point I'm going to come to, mate. Don't worry about that one. And Elias, all right, mate, how are we doing? Like he's saying there as well, I love Eric Dyer. Eric Dyer loves me. And yeah, what else do we need to say? He's one of our own. <laughs> love it. Absolutely love it. Right, Ben Foster. Good morning, Dan. Morning to you too. Elias, let's talk about 700 million bottle jobs. That is what we are doing, mate. Don't worry about that one. <laughs> and then, right, uh, just a girl loves Spurs. Presume that's Kate, morning, Dan. Morning to you too. Hope everything's good. Hope you're feeling better. And Tony, jealous of what they just lost. Can't say I am. And Kate saying to you, morning, Ellie, with Elias. They may lose Wolves away too. It's not a simple place to win. No, it's not. And they've also got Chelsea and just a harmless potato. Hope all good, mate. Hello to you with Kate saying, Arsenal could crumble from here on with the complete crisis and confidence. That's exactly what I'm basically saying. That, that could really have done them. That could really have mentally just broke them. And we shall see in the next two games. We know everyone always turns up for a London derby and everything, yeah? Do you know what? I can't really say I care. If they lose against Chelsea, lose against Wolves, but go and beat us 5-1, but still don't win the league, bollocks. That'll still make my season for me because we haven't really got nothing to look forward to now at Spurs. So, yeah. Ellie, on last night, <laughs> go on, you watched the game. What was your opinion? I can't stop laughing because, right, it was, <laughs> uh, <laughs> it was just one of those games where you knew Arsenal were going to lose because, like, everything they were trying and they were faffing about in front of goal and they weren't taking the right shot, they weren't doing the right path. And they God, they had one or two chances where they should have put it in the back of the net. I mean, yeah. have a, that one straight at the keeper, basically passed it to me, right idiot. At right at the keeper, right? And um, I just I was watching the Man City game as well. Like, I, I didn't have two te tellies on, but... Sorry, because my brother's just... boo's phoning me. He's going to... He's phoning me to have a laugh as well. But, um, yeah, I just feel, felt that they just faffed about. And although they did play some nice football, it wasn't clinical. Yeah? Because they've been clinical in the league. They're battering teams 6-0 away at West Ham, 5-0, 4-0, whatever. Right? 
and they just like fell flat in front of goal, right? Even have totally. they how how was the new Thierry Henry? What are you on about? <laughs> he doesn't even lace his boots. You know what I mean? Exactly. He doesn't but even was... get near his boots, right? But so it's, can... it's a fun time for us Spurs fans, but we've got to look at our own house as well, right? So I don't like to put the dampers on, but we have to shape ship. Uh, what's the, we've got to get ourselves in a ship shape condition for this London mm -hmm. derby. Our season, we can't win anything, but we can win this match for our fans, right? And at home, we really played well in the mm -hmm. home fixture. They beat us last year, but that was for a long time they hadn't beaten us. And we even beat them when we were at Wembley. And none of them turned up yes, that sir. day. Well, we've done Liverpool troops. at Wembley as well, didn't we? Yeah. We've done Liverpool at Wembley. I, mean, I remember right. the troops having a breakdown outside the ground. <laughs> <laughs> that was comedy gold, man. And oh, like, of course it is. Expressions going at him as well. It was so funny. Oh, it's, but, it's always yeah. quality when you see one of them I'm have happy. a breakdown. I'm a happy lady, but I'll be ecstatic if we beat them next Sunday. Because it's Sunday oh, yeah. now, not a Saturday Arsenal fans, because you bloody lost. <laughs> there you go. All right. And what's Philly 2109 saying here? Morning to you, mate. Arsenal are just a high-profile Spurs. Both teams will ultimately win nothing after the Spanish po Pochettino. I totally agree. I mean, we can grill them as much as we want. They're a bigger club than us. They've won more than us, everything. Yes, yes, yes. Do you know what? I don't care, mate. They're not you richer than us, though, again. Dan. We're, ri we're <laughs> apparently richer than them. <laughs> well, when we start winning stuff, we can preach that one, yeah? Yeah. But yeah. Like Nick saying here at Philly 2109, exactly the Harrods version of Spurs. And he's saying, no, we must win the North London derby. Yes. Yeah, but as as long as they don't win the league, mate, whether we win it or not, either way, as long as whatever happens to them stops them winning the league, that makes their league really no better than ours. So, because <laughs> they've won nothing again either with this spectacular team that they've got, so they say. Yeah. And Mick Vickers here says, uh, the Woolwich could be drained by the time they play us. Totally. That's what I'm saying. It, it could be actually interesting. I'm not terrified <laughs> yeah. anymore. I'm actually now more... Let's sit back and wait until we see what these next... Because I just didn't know they had to play Chelsea as well. And it was yeah, still Chelsea all showed that out to me. Yeah, I, I didn't actually know they had to do that. So, Philly yeah. 2 109 any game where the pressure is on Arsenal will fold and the history of the Arsenal bottle jobs. I mean, if you really think about it, Spurs are probably some of the biggest bottle jobs out there. But I think Arsenal have got the history of being significantly in front by a certain time in the league and then falling to pieces. I think they've done it about eight times anyway. So, Charlie, with the game against Arsenal coming up, we haven't got to play no one. We can sit back, whatever else. What do you think is going to happen with Arsenal in their next two games by the time they come to us and what can happen in this game with us? I say Arsenal win against Wolves, lose against Chelsea. I don't I don't like to say that Arsenal will win, but I think they'll have to get it back and then their confidence will be drained against Chelsea. So they'll play against us being not confident at all, thinking we've lost, we've bought the league. I don't know. But I just, I'm a bit scared because it still is Arsenal and they're not a bad team. Like we we we're, we're not miles better. So I mean, like, I I bloody they're love. Than... I, they're, they're better than us. This year they've been win. So I mean, I can't say we'll win, but I, I think we will. It's just more. It, it depends on how Arsenal's next two games play out. I mean, if they lose both, we'll win by a mile. But if they win one of them, I think it'll be a way harder game because their confidence will spike back up. And but to be honest, I'm a bit scared for us too because we've got two weeks off, and that's way too long because we are not going to have any momentum. We're going to be. We're gonna have a week off, and then we're gonna have a week training or something like that, like three days off. And I feel like it's not really going to be in our favour. That I feel like having games that far apart is never really in your favour. So I really, you know what, I I agree with what you're saying there because a lot of people, pardon me, a lot of people like <clears throat> it's good when their team gets a rest, but then when you get a rest for two weeks when you're in a momentum, it's not always good, is it? I mean, the time mm -hmm. is usually good to get a two week, um, two weeks off is when you've lost three games on the trial or something. But when you're in a winning manner as such, having that two weeks off doesn't really do a favour all the time, does it? But even if you lose all of them, it doesn't because then you quit with a dip, 
And some players don't get out of that dip, and some do. So you have like a half team playing amazing and the other half playing like crap because they think they've lost it all. Mm. So I really, it's, this two weeks is not going to help us at all. And that's why I'm a bit scared of. So if we do it good, the two week dip, it, it will just, it will have to be a good dip. Otherwise, we're done. I mean, the other thing, I mean, you made some very good points here. The other thing, like what uh, Mick Vickers says here, top five is no more, but who cares? That's very true, because now Munich are into the semi-finals, and so are Dortmund, and obviously I think Leverkusen are going to go further in the Europa. Yeah, that's uh, fifth place out of the question now, isn't it? Yeah. Well, fifth Hello? place doesn't make fifth place doesn't make Champions League. So you've got to keep Not forward. now it doesn't. Not no, now it doesn't. Because of the coefficient, isn't it? So yeah, we if got Dortmund it, wouldn't have gone through and Arsenal would have beat Munich, yeah. fifth place would have still, still been to England. And Man, C yeah. Man City went out as well, didn't they? They worked it out all on TV last night, but I like the way you explained it better, right? Because sometimes pun football pundits can confuse things. But what I would say is that we can still finish fourth. If we get Champions League, I made a I made a little statement today that I like to aim high, like Bill Nicholson. I don't want to yeah, go yeah. Europa. Because Europa League, right? Okay, if we win it, we win it, but nobody's gonna give us credibility for winning the Europa mm -hmm. League. They won't. Just like West Ham don't get any credibility for winning the conference league. Oh they no, they got credit Champions for that. They Europe, deserve credit not, for that. Really. <laughs> they, no, West Ham deserved credit for what they've done. They was in the cup yeah, and they won I, it. I'll That's all there you. is to it, in my eyes. And it's I'll more than we've you, done. But I don't, I don't, I don't pamper to that because I don't. I just don't like West Ham. No, <laughs> I, 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 I say I hate it how it is. More, I hate Arsenal more, but I don't want to give them any credence. So I'm, I mean, I'm so... abstaining from any praise. <laughs> yeah. Look, the, the, the way I see it, when you're four, good, you're good. When you're bad, yeah. you're bad. And when someone's good, you just got to put your hands up and say they're good. That's all there is to it. I just want to go Champions League because the last time we were in it, right, we could have beaten AC Milan, but bloody Conte brought on but we didn't. Sanchez. He brought on Sanchez when Romero got sent off. What was that all about? Come on, Conte. I know you're a defensive manager, but that didn't make any sense. We needed a goal. I'm and sorry, Eddie, but... Sanchez. I have to disagree with you. I think champion, we don't need Champions League next season because we'll just get knocked out in the group stage. I'd way rather have Europa League, have a good base, get to the final, get to the semi-finals, and can show what it can do. Because if we get into the Champions League, our fan base will just get distraught. We'll have like four weeks of greatness, and then afterwards we'll just get knocked out and we'll hate it. You know what no, I mean? I, I disagree. I, I think you've got, if you aim high, right, and if we make Champions League, we might be able to sign that slightly better quality player. Yeah, I know we haven't done it in the past because Levy's pulled the plug out, right? So when you're when you're striving high like Poch was, he was at his peak, but they didn't back him and they didn't give him any money for five hundred odd days. So it depleted our the strength in in the squad. We didn't have a strong, and now we haven't got a strong squad. We've got to go strong, like, but like Ellie. you say, right, Dan? When you say. I don't want a backup. I want a player that can come on, who's just mm -hmm. as good as the other player. And it's Alex who's got place. me saying that. Yeah, he can take his place, right? If you're having a bad game, say Basuma has a bad game, his ass is on the bench because there's a mm -hmm. just a good player on the bench than you. You see, that's what I want to see at Spurs so that we can actually compete. Yeah, but Ellie, we'd have to get a minimum of like eight or ten players to be in that position because right now we'd have like maybe five, four players that are Champions League quality. And if we really want the whole Champions League quality side and we want to get through the group stage, we'd have to get a minimum of eight players. So I feel like to, just to stay in the Europa League... Eight players then? But we, he won't money. get eight players. He'll get a We've maximum of four players. Have yeah, so if you want to keep it realistic, if you, we want to see how Levy will actually do it, I think Europa League will be way better because we will still get the four players because Andrew take, will bang take on it. Le take Levy out the equation, right? Take Levy out the equation. Because he's the one who's been the stumbling block for our club, right? If you take mm -hmm. him out of the equation and we're very, very ambitious and we actually go for it, get the eight players that you need so that you can... Yeah, but... Ellie, you still want guaranteed no. to win it because there's no, really Ellie, fantastic you teams can, in it. You can say about get the eight players you need, but we're talking about Tottenham here. When do That's we ever go I'm and do saying. that? I, I'm, I know what you mean, but we've got to think big from now on. We've got to think yeah. big, Dan. We can't... 
harp on about the past. We've got to go for it. Well, that's the problem with the past with Spurs. There is no past, really, except that we don't do what we've well, we got, got to do. To right, I've just got to go to the side final, quick. Didn't we? Yeah, and then after that, did absolutely nothing. We played pants right, after in the that. final. If we played well, we could have probably beaten Liverpool. Yeah. But the, so the, the, the shocking decision, the shocking decision for the uh, handball yeah, made shocking it. shocking decision for Kane, isn't it? I think yeah, Kate it says was. it very well here, what she's put on the side here, Eddie, yeah? And Charlie, what she's put on the side here. A fourth is in our hands, but... That's a big but there, Kate. That's a very big one. We yeah. have a terrible running. She's right. She is right. I mean, that running we've got, I know. Not in specific order, I've got it, but I know it's Arsenal, Liverpool, City, and we still got to play Chelsea. I'm sure they'll throw Chelsea in that somewhere as well. We could be playing yeah. all four of those teams back to back. Yeah. And you couldn't ask for a worse running if you tried, could you? And then the I know at the end is, we've got two easier games. The yeah. good thing we have is, got though, two Dad, we've... Go on, James. Charlie. Charlie, sorry. Okay. I keep, keep uh, calling you James. Sorry, no worries, no worries. The good thing is we've got two like championship sides we've got to play to at the end of the season. So to think of that, if we've got that in between, like, we've got two of them and then we play against Chelsea and City. So I feel we do have a bit of a rest in between. So if it, it is not the worst we could have had, I feel like if we would have had this and then in the end we'd have two championship sides, then we would have been way worse. But I think if we get these these two kind of like rests in between, we could we mm -hmm. could just like focus more on the big games uh, ahead. So I think that's that that will help us a lot. Yeah. I mean, with what Alf has just said here, fifth is is now basically guaranteed Europa League spot, right? Yeah, yeah. basically. It because is. you've got um both German fifth. teams now in the in the uh semi semi finals. Fifth and, and six is Europa. Fifth and six yeah. is Europa. And seventh I think, is um, and uh, what's what's their name? Uh, Leverkusen, they're gonna go through to the next round. So Germany yeah. are gonna have an extra team in the Champions League. Basically, yeah. and you and know Liverpool's what? I'm not too it. bothered about that. I'm not. I'm not bothered about it yet because if I'm going to be honest, I mean, it was Brian who made me look at it this way by explaining the situation. Yeah, I think I'd rather go Europa with Spurs. Why? Because if we go in the Champions League, we're just going to be another number again. We're going to get embarrassed out there completely. I think, unless Ange changes a few things. But again, as I say about Ange, I've got to see it. To believe it. That's why I just say, get on with this season. Season's done. Don't really care. I, I want to see what my manager does next season. And if we go in the Champions League, with that team we've got, and even if we get another two very good players, we are still going to have teams like Real Madrid, Bayern Munich, Barcelona, Juventus, Inter Milan, PSG. Absolutely yeah. tear us a new one. Uh, so I would rather go in the Europa and go for it. Actually try to win it. Go for the Europa Cup because we never seem to take it serious. Go on, Charlie. You want to say something? And we're literally struggling with one game a week. So I mean, like to say, if we get a Champions League on that and the cups and all this stuff, we won't do anything. I think we, we, we it would just be horrible. That's why Europa League would be so much better. And because this season we've been playing one game for the last two, three months, and we still seem to lose a lot. So to say, <laughs> hello, Dyer. We to say that we'll. Um, <laughs> To say He's, one of, He's one, one of our own. He's one of our own. Go on, Charlie. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> so we only get what we play one game a week for the last two months, and even if we get two players in, that would be world class. I think that wouldn't even change a bit. I think we play that two games a week better. We could never play three games, like six games, seven games a month. That would never help us. Never. You know what I mean? That's why I'm. This season is this season really a given. We should have gotten we should get Champions League because we're we've only got one game a week. We should get high, but we're not doing that. So if we get Champions League next season, which is so much harder, we'll just get hammered. We'll get absolutely battered because we, we can't even play more than two games a week now. I mean, on the positive side of it, yeah, just to swing it over to the other side a bit. You would think the positive side to it is maybe the players we could attract more because we're in the Champions League. But the question is, are we going to pay the money for those sort of players? This is all to yet. We can only yeah, wait and what, see. That's why I'll so what do you reckon? Everything. So what do you reckon, Charlie, that if we go in the Champions League, do you reckon we got more chance of getting better players? Or do you just don't do you just think it's just Spurs and it'll be what it is, sort of thing? I think it won't really make a difference, Champions League or Europa League, because the players that we'll sign see that we've made a, an upgrade of last year. 
and they see that Ange has got a, got like a, a direct plan. And think of it like Dragosin, uh, Werner, not Werner, Dragosin, Van der Ven, all these players had so many bigger club options, like Madison, all these players had like all these clubs that were looking out for them. We had no, we didn't even have the Europa in that season, this season, and still those players chose for us. So who says they won't choose us when we need to play in Europe? I know it's not Champions League, but we're still in Europe. So I think it won't really make a big difference. Mm. Oh. Okay, Ellie? I disagree. Because when, if you look at Madison, where he is, where he lies in the world of football, he wouldn't get a look in into uh, the other teams. They wouldn't want him. Because why, why weren't other clubs like Real Madrid in for him then? Why wasn't Barcelona in for him? Why wasn't Inter Milan in for him? Because he's not good enough. That's why that... he's at Spurs. Right? So we're, if we're going to attract the top, top players... You have to get the power in football, right? Man mm -hmm. City's got the money, they seized the power, and now they've got the trophies, right? What 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 makes you think Spurs can't do that? We can do it, but it's all depending on one man, Levy, because he's been our stumbling block 23 years. 20, this is the 24th season, and we've won one cup because he's held us back and, and made us a business. Right, but now yeah. you've got the money, Levy, and we're FFP champions apparently. <laughs> the press, right? Put them, put your money where your mouth is, and attract the best place. You've got to get the power. The power, we've got to start winning things, right? Because that will attract those players in. And if we're in the Champions League and we do really, really well in it, and they can see Postacoglu is playing sexy football. Because it's high risk football, but it's sexy football. Because it's quite exciting to watch Spurs, even though we yeah. lose four 0 right? And we think, oh, for, you know, you you swear under your breath, don't you? What the blood? How can you go to Aston Villa and play beautiful football, and then the next week or two weeks down the line, you lose to Newcastle, right? Four 0 right? Well, in that aspect, that's Spurs for you, right? I just want to read out. Couple on the side, quick Eddie. I think Levy out makes a very good point here. Does anyone actually believe the UEFA Champions League football helps us this summer? Under these owners, we will never progress. We are already looking at crap like Werner. Next season is going to be the same all over again. If we're going to go by history, mate, no one, no one can debate you because everyone, and I do mean everyone who is saying yes but we've got this, we've got that, we can do this, we can do this, we can do that, we might do this. That's all hope. Yeah. If you want to go by everything what the man said there, he's going by fact. He's going by what we have seen. Everything you're saying, Ellie, I totally agree with it, but you're living in hope. No. No? You read so you're that not... wrong. You read that wrong. I said 24 years we've seen the history of Spurs leaving not backing the managers. Oh, no, no, what I'm on about, sorry, is what you said earlier, as in we can go forward, we can buy these players if we get Champions League, yeah, we can you, get we've this got and the money we can now. do it. We've got the money, we're looking for new investors to put into the club, so now we've got the, we're FFP champions and we've got the money, there's no excuse for Levy not to push us on. So you're hoping that he does? No, I'm not hoping, I'm saying there's no excuse, I'm not saying there's no No, there hope. isn't. There's no hope in this. Well, that'd be I a big problem trust then. Him, if that's what you mean. Yeah. So you are hoping that with him. the money we have got and the knowing that we can do all this, you're hoping that he does actually take advantage no, of it I this didn't time say that, and do it. No, but I, this is how I'm, I'm translating what you're anything. saying. I'm saying you've got the money now, spend it and spend it but wisely. Do, but do you think they will? No. But you hope they do. No, there's no hope in it. I haven't got so no hope. I, so I, basically, you're I, saying I, we ain't got I, a chance. I've got, I've got this. I've, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? I'm I'm numb. I'm numb from it. I get what you mean. You're past even trying to hope for it because you have the yeah. history you've seen. Go on, Charlie. What? You want to say something, mate? Yeah. To be honest, if you look at it, Levy has been spending more money and being buying players earlier than mm -hmm. he was usually because usually it would just always be the last minute deals, playing way too yeah. much for the for the players. So I feel like Ange has made a difference in that. So he'll, I think he'll pay a bit more 
And usual, I think he'll he's back manager a bit more because as you see, he is back in manager. You know what I mean? He's mm-hmm. buying players earlier, he's doing all these things. And I think he will I think this season, I think this transfer window will go all very well for us. I think he'll listen to it. We'll have like four players in within a month, within like three like within two weeks, three weeks. Mm-hmm. Or it will go very badly and Levy's not gonna listen to Andy Postacoglu and we're just gonna have players like last day of the season just gonna buy, but I don't think that will happen because Andy's very stubborn on that. Well, one of the things that I always do bring up, I mean, on the side of Levy again, I don't want to make this too much about that, Rick, but people can't say that he doesn't spend the money because we are the fourth biggest spenders in the past five years in the Premiership. Only Arsenal, Chelsea and Man U have actually spent more money than us. We have actually spent more money than City and Liverpool. It just always seems to be the amount of crap that we actually buy with it usually. And this transfer window was definitely one of the better ones, definitely had a bit of luck in it and whatever. But it's like, I'm agreeing with what you say, Charlie. He does actually spend the money. He does actually put some money down. But it's just over the past 10, 15, 20 years, you can say 90% of what he bought is... is it's like the seven players he bought when uh, we got rid of Bale. Only, what, two of them actually come out good. And, and you can't, you need more players to be like the ones you buy to be better, not buy seven and hope that one comes out good, isn't it? Yeah. Did you feel, I'll put, I'll so, what do you reckon, Ellie? It's bad recruitment, right? And the mm. man at the top, right? You employ, I, I like, I likened it on Talk and Ball, right? I said, you've got a restaurant, right? You're running a restaurant, right? You've got your owner of the restaurant, you've got the chef, the manager is the in the front of house manager, right? So he's keeping an eye. He's he's your he's he's sort of keeping an eye on everything, right? Then you've got your chef mm-hmm. and your shoe chefs, and the shoe chefs are employed by the chef, right? So if if one of those things go wrong, right, it buggers up the whole restaurant, and that's what's happened at Spurs. We spent money, but we haven't spent. If we're the fourth or fifth biggest spenders, and we oh. on average under Levy, I think we finished six. I believe, yeah. So Quite we have yeah. the spending correlates to where we finish in the league, right? And the biggest spenders, they're the ones who win trophies, or the it ones shows. that spend it on the right players. I mean, yeah, like Liverpool was what Liverpool just needed to get to that bit. Liverpool just needed to get to that last bit. They knew their biggest problem was their goalkeeper and their defender, so they went and spent yeah. that on about 140 million on a goalkeeper who they knew. Wasn't quite world class, but was hundred percent going to be world class. And yeah. a defender who wasn't world class, but everyone could see he was absolute quality at Southampton and was pretty sure that he'd come good. Yeah. And that's what we got to do. We actually got to start getting those players now that can walk into that team now because they're better than what's already at the team. And then I know this takes time, but then in the long run, over the next season, um, buying players by other players that can either go in above them. Or can be level with them. The the phrase I keep using is that if they do something wrong, they got to look over their shoulder because they know they lost their place. We're not going to be able to do that in the in the summer, yeah. but we need to buy players now that will get into that team straight off, basically. Yeah. And well, there's, there's we just so have to wait and see. Data now, isn't there? It's data led data. It's like playing them. football manager. Yeah, it's like playing football manager. It is. Because <laughs> you're looking at a player's running stats. You're see, seeing his heat map. You're seeing loads of different things. But I, I think the scouts have to look at the technicality of a player and take that into consideration. Because he could be mm. running all the time and he ain't got no skill. <laughs> Do you know what I mean by that? Like he's He hasn't got the vision and the mm. skill to pick out a pass. Because yeah. like... There's many, many players who are similar, but the ones who are standouts, they're the ones who can make a big difference in a match. Well, we definitely you know? need another number 10, don't we? Because Madison yeah. just seems to, since he's to come back from that injury. Because he exactly. looks on the bench and he thinks I'm better than all of you. You're not yeah. getting my place. Even like with Adoji. Adoji has been so lazy these past five games. And I think, yeah. what, three, at least three of the goals we conceded have been partly down to him not even yeah. running back and putting pressure on the player that's beat him. There's too many, too many positions in that team. Yeah, I agree. Where they really haven't got... They? Yeah, they haven't got to be bothered about it. The there's bench. no one there. 
and they're thinking, who's going to oh, take ben, their place? He's not going to get my place anytime soon. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And right, just going what it says on the side here, a couple of people saying, Jazz Fusion, Ange don't do tactics. He's one of your own. Okay, fair enough. And what Ben says here. Plus, with Champions League, we get all the excuses about the fatigue over and over again. We have only been playing basically one game a week and still been struggling. I mean, if I hear anybody go on about, yeah, but he's coming to the end of the season, those players might be knackered, whatever. One <laughs> game a week, basically. I mean, how early we went out in the cups and everything, and it's no excuse. All right, audio. Morning, mate. Hope all's good with you. And morning, people. Kate, what are you saying? What you're saying here? Um, the two poor games are near the end of the season. Yep, that's true. I mean, our last two games of the season are games we should win. But these next four games, I don't think any team would want to play those four on the trot, would you? Um, Jazz is saying to you, it's the owner, early, same way as always. And he's also saying the summer will be hilarious. And Ben, what you're saying now, I'm going to go through a couple more quick and then come back to used to. If anything, it looks like Levy is more of a misser than ever. Miser. Oh, what's that? I thought you said misser. Miser. Miser. Yeah, yeah. That's, <laughs> yeah. that's my reading now. I'm, it's another I'm word still get, tight. <laughs> I'm, I'm still getting the hang of reading out loud. I mean, my reading's very good. It's just reading it and reading it out no, loud no, at the same right, time man, wasn't something right. that I had to do at school. I'll take <laughs> you know. All the time. It's you know, just when getting you the hang of reading out loud you again. You see a word and you read it differently. It happens to People everybody. Do. You're a clever right, man, what's, don't worry. What's beyond 72 here saying? We need to raise our standards. As a club, we stop signing rejects and then we might be able to hold on to the better players and move forward. Well, with what you've just said there, you're right. But I think everybody's pretty sure that what I'm going to show now is going to happen. Because I think it's just weird how this has come out just now. Jeez. I mean, I don't know how to expand that so people can see it. But if people are seeing it, it says Timo Werner now has enough Tottenham minutes for data to be computed. On his num and his numbers are incredible in the Premier League. Right. Successful dribbles. He's first. Offes offensive duels won. He's first. Crosses, he's first. Expen expected assists, second. Goals missed, first. Charlie, I'm going to come to you on this one. Give me your opinion on everything I have just shown you there, mate, and said to you. Well, I think I've missed like five games. Of what I think I've missed five games. I think he's, he's done amazing in those five games I haven't watched then because those the other 10 games he was playing, he was not that good. He was below average. So I don't know where he got those uh, he got those things from, got those stats from. But the thing is, I said, you know, I sent you the message yesterday. Like, what on earth is this? What games have we missed? Like, has he been playing behind closed doors where they've been keeping those stats up? Because this is just like I have not seen a game where he was the first, number one this number one that could even Poro or even Son has been doing better in those aspects. So I don't know because wh where's the stat with goals missed? Because I feel like that should be like top one percent goals missed. So uh, we'll see, but. To be honest, after Aston, uh, after that new Newcastle game, I'm completely Werner out. I don't, I don't think he is good enough for our team. He's had like three good games from the ten or from the twelve, so get him out. I'm not, I'm not too. Uh, this, these stats are just complete crap. I mean, one thing it definitely does show, doesn't it? Like, because, oh, pardon me. There's many a times that you have a debate with someone about a player, about a team, and you get a lot of people who say, right. There's the stats. Check that out. Right, everyone. There's the stats. Check that out. Timo Werner in. There we go. That's what the stats say. Bollocks. That man is not to come to Tottenham. <laughs> but you know with it showing stats like that, how they start appearing and things like that, I think yeah. everybody knows. Werner's coming, isn't he? Ellie? Yeah. Stats yeah. and what I just said there? Yeah. I just feel... I'll go from to and fro with Kate as well about it because she liked him at first, but now she's coming more my way, right? Because, like, the thing is with him, he hasn't got no goal prowess. You know, when, when, when you see a player, right, how I assess a player especially, does he, can he control the ball? Yes, he can. 
but in certain areas. Has he got vision? No. Yeah. He hasn't got vision. He doesn't know. When he's know in front of goal, he might as well be bloody blind. Yeah, or to get <laughs> his body into shape to receive the ball, right, in front of goal. When he's on the wing, he can receive it lovely because it's quite easy because you're not really... You're not really pressed as much, you know. They'll press him when he comes nearer because they know he's fast and he's going to go for that byline and cross it in, right? And that's how we play. We interlink, we do one-twos, get into the box and cross it. Not too bad at that. But in front of goal, I watched him against Brighton. Um, was it Brighton? It was one, I can't remember the game, but it, there was two times, right, where Johnson done a fantastic cross and all he had to do was run in front of the de defender and he would have had a tap in. What does he Whoa. do? He stands behind him like a lummox. No, no go prowess at all, right? And he's done it on many occasions. Do you remember the first game he played, Man United? He missed three big chances. And that meant we could have been 3 0 up before they scored their first goal. Okay. Timo Vola, right. I'm saying no. Do not sign him, please. Right, they won't still. listen to me because I'm just a woman, you know. No, that's got nothing to do with it. Everyone you knows still. that you're women. <laughs> Morning, still. How, how are we doing? Did you actually get any sleep last night? Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> after after bust, bashing the goo, goons. <laughs> After after jumping on another show last night, Spurs Kings TV, go and watch that one. That was a brilliant show they did last night. Um, yeah, I feel I was knackered. I didn't go to bed till three o'clock, and then I won't deny it. I went to bed with a big smile on my face. <laughs> so, seeing as we we've already talked about this, but now you now you've come on it still, and I know you are craving to do this. Last night, Arsenal, give us your opinion on everything, mate. Who invented? Fraud Teta. Who came up with the word Fraud Teta? A genius. Me. Me. Four years ago. Go back. I, I, I started mm. off. I said Fraud Teta. And everyone had a go at me, all the Arsenal fans, you know. I came up with it. And every year I've been saying it. This guy is a choke merchant. He's an absolute choke artist. He's done it again. And you know what? If he doesn't win the league, he's done it again. Fraud he's done it again. He's done it again. <laughs> what, what makes me laugh about Arsenal is that <clears throat> when we had Poch, we were progressing. Yeah, pick up Eric. We were progressing <laughs> from where we were, <laughs> right? We were getting to semi-finals. We were getting mm -hmm. to Champions League final. We we tried we tried to challenge for the league, but we fell short twice. But we were definitely knocking on the door. We were a really good team. He progressed us. Mm -hmm. And he did it on a shoestring budget. Very much. And all I ever heard, all I ever heard from Gooners was bottle jobs, Spursy, but what have you won? All you talk about is progress. All you talk about is how you got the best defensive stats. All you talk about is how you got the best attacking stats. All you talk about is how you've got the best striker. You've won nothing. Bottle jobs, the lot of you. Okay. <laughs> We we that's all that's all we had to we had to, we had to listen to that for years years and years and years. Now they bottle Europa, they bottle Champions League, they bottle league titles, they bottle top four. They've got the best stats for defending. They've got the best stats for attacking. For attacking. They're the youngest team, and they spent seven hundred million pounds where we spent about three fifty. And they haven't stopped buying players. And they signed a hundred million pound. Uh, sent him in. We stopped buying players for Poch for two years. Arteta is nothing but a Pochettino with an FA Cup, and they hate to hear it. They can the FA Cup was given to him on a plate as well, wasn't it? He uh, didn't well, get into that. Yes, and no, you've got to give him some credit because he was the manager. But I hear what you're saying. They are Pochettino with an FA Cup, nothing more, nothing less, nothing and they've less. spent a lot, and they've spent a lot more money doing it. So, when I go in on them and I call them bottle jobs and RC and choke merchants and all of that, they 100% deserve it because that's exactly what they did to us. So, if they don't like it, then don't give it. That's what I say. I mean, I think the picture I put on there just shows it all, <laughs> didn't it? 
I did it again. <laughs> They you felt know what? I call him. But you know what? I had to put mate. Hang on a sec, Ellie. I had to put mate at the end of it. You know, just to add the extra yeah. little bit to it. Like they did it again, mate. <laughs> mate. <laughs> I like that. I like that. I've started on, calling him like... Criteta. <laughs> Criteta's a good one. Yeah, that's I mean, my one still. <laughs> the thing that done me for the job, last but night. It's, it's pretty good. <laughs> the thing that done me for last night though was the fact of. Eric Dyer, man of the match. Eric it's unbelievable. fucking Dyer, man of the match. <laughs> and do you That's know what? He had a brilliant game. He made some excellent tackles. He really did. I thought he was very, very good. I was saying to you while we was watching it with Alan still that mm, yeah, he were. actually had a really good game. And of all the teams they go against, Bayern Munich with two old school Spurs players in there and they can't even bang one in again <laughs> with Eric Dyer in the defence. And what was it they always used to say to us? Don't worry, we're very dire in defence and whatever. You'll always score the goal and that. Where are you now, people? Where are you now? Yeah, show so, your faces. <laughs> going back on a bit of what I spoke about earlier, seeing as you've come on a little bit later there, I, like on your show and on the show I was on before and that, admitted I was terrified of playing Arsenal. Then found out off of you that they also had Chelsea to play before they played us, which I didn't know that. And Wolves away. And for me, yeah, Wolves. I knew they had Wolves, but I didn't know they had to play Chelsea as well. So as soon as I heard that, mm -hmm. I'm like, okay, I'm not terrified, but I'm scared. Because their style of play to ours, it just, I want to ask for trouble. But then they lost to Villa as well. Now they've lost to Bayern Munich. They look absolutely knackered last night. I mean, absolutely shattered. And this world-class player that they've got, Saka, something like, what was it? 42 touches. <laughs> key passes, zero. Shots, zero. <laughs> Successful dribbles it. and crosses, zero. Jules won by about 11. <laughs> and then at the end, my man, all of a sudden, out of nowhere, starts limping to come off the pitch. And what, and what did they say to all Spurs fans? What did they always used to say to us? Oh, your star, your star boy, Harry Kane. He doesn't turn up in the big moments. He's not that good. What happened to your star boy? What happened to your star boy, Arsenal? Talk to us. Why did he limp off the pitch at the end Talk when he us. wasn't limping during the game or nothing? You know, it's, it's comical. And people even try and have tried to tell me that Saka is better than Foden. Saka better than Foden, Ellie. Are they having a laugh? <laughs> she, she Are, you having a laugh? She Are you having a laugh? Are you having a laugh, mate? Are you having a laugh? You're having a laugh, mate. <laughs> Shut up. Charlie? You stupid idiots. <laughs> Saka better than Foden. I thought, is this a joke? I mean, he Saka. is... Saka is... Even though he's from Arsenal, he is not a bad player, but Foden is he's just He's a very good better. player. He's a, he's very, a very good, good player. player. Foden is just better. He's one of the treble. He's doing all these things for a great team that is not in a great situation right now. And still, Saka is playing in a in a team that he's still bottling it in the big moments. I don't see Foden doing this. I know they lost against uh, Real Madrid yesterday, but still, Real Madrid isn't the, isn't an easy. It was, pressure, but... it was on penalties. It could go either way, couldn't it? Yeah, exactly. exactly. Yeah. I mean, like, it's Arsenal, so it's always good to laugh at Arsenal, and especially if their star boy does it. It was dire. It's amazing. It was, yeah. Yeah, but it, no, I saw because on one football, there's like two, one football, there's another football. It said that Kimmich was the man of the match, which was really weird. Oh, right. Well, the one I watched and uh, after. No, Eric Dyer. Uh, Eric Dyer was giving it. Eric Dyer was yeah, giving yeah, it. But think, it, it, it. Yeah, yeah, but on different apps, said different things. Yeah. The, the, Look, but, you know, you know like Sofa School and all these apps. Eric Dyer was the man of the match. End of. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, God. No, on different apps, it said different things. Yeah, the apps and the media and, and people in the media I'll kind give of it to Kimmich. was the best, but but he, I'll but give it was it awarded. To Kimmich. Kimmich it was, was the best player. I would Kimmich say. I mean, and Goretzka. Goretzka was unbelievable. Goretzka was pretty good as well. Yeah. Mm. Was, I mean, well, Kimmich is a player. I think, I think Alfie is right. Player. I think Alfie's right. Dyer's going to the Euros now because Southgate loves him and he's got on two good performances. So now he's 100 percent going to the Euros. You know what? That would that would just suss Spurs all over, wouldn't it? Uh, I mean, it's comical uh, that uh, Kane is cursed and that, yeah. And 
that it goes to the team, one of two teams where you'd basically put your house on it, that they win the league, either Munich or um, Paris Saint-Germain. He goes there, he doesn't win the league. Eric Dyer goes there, you can't stop laughing hard enough because you've taken probably one of our worst defenders. And now all of a sudden, they're, they've just done Arsenal, they're in the Champions League semi-final, Eric Dyer gets man of the match against Arsenal and... Uh, I did it's tell people who were telling me Munich have been crap right off the you, Germans at your peril at the end of the day, yeah? You could have they are going to get to that Champions League it. final. They, they never lose that Champions League final. They're going to, and they win it. And Eric Dyer is going to be standing there with the Champions League. Eric Dyer. After, after this in Tottenham, <laughs> in the press, whatever he, statement he made, dissing us and Angie's training measurements, and then he comes against Arsenal and gets mad at the match. You could have liked it, I'm telling you. It's comical. Can I, can I so, say, this, Fo, this on, Foden versus Foden v Saka, right? <laughs> but Foden scoring <laughs> worldies in the Bernabeu. Saka's getting pocketed by Dyer in the Allianz Arena. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, but Saka's better than Foden. Okay, all right. Yeah. Never, never, never. I mean, Foden has probably already won more than Saka will ever win, win in his career. I mean, Cole I Palmer. Yeah. Cole Palmer is better than Saka. I love Cole Palmer. He's better oh, I have to disagree. Palmer, I have to disagree because Cole Palmer has been great it. for one season, really. And I feel like Saka has been good for the last three. And this, he's been really good for Arsenal in the last three seasons, doing a lot for the club, scoring a lot of goals. Mm. And saying Cole Palmer is better than I get you saying it, but he is not, he hasn't proved it yet. I know it's, it's his first season at Chelsea. He's doing amazing at Chelsea, but you can't say he's better than Saka already. Given like, can I, can I, can I give you a stat, Charlie? Can I give you a stat? Yeah. Truth bomb. Oh, watch out. We got stats. Chelsea, this season, have been to more cup finals than Saka Boys Arsenal. <laughs> yes, they have. And they're in the FA Cup semi-final. If they beat City, they're in another final. And it yeah. also, Saka's <laughs> never scored, up, to my knowledge, Saka's never scored four goals in one, one uh, match in a struggling Chelsea side as well, who haven't really performed that well. They've performed well in certain matches, but he's never scored four goals. He's carrying Saka's... Chelsea, isn't he, really? Mm. Oh, yeah, he's, he, he's, he's doing what Gareth Bell did for Spurs. Everything. Yeah. I think he's, he's a fabulous player. He's quite he should team. go to the Euros. Chelsea, Chelsea messed, um, Man City messed up getting rid of him. They've really messed up. Four you think so? Pep might buy I mean, because I must admit, he is looking good and we could have gone for him as well, couldn't we? Yeah. You know? So, we're going on what I was saying there still. about yeah. our, I've been terrified how we're going to play Arsenal and everything else and all that. I'm still wary. But after now, they've done by been done by Villa. Broken yeah. in the heart by Munich. And um, with Wolves and Munich to come to us. What's your opinion yeah. on the game coming up now with Spurs and Arsenal? Yeah, like I said to you, um, when everyone was saying Arsenal going to batter us, we're all scared. I said, well, it depends because th th they've drawn with Bayern. They've lost to Villa. They've lost to Bayern. They're now in a little slump, a mini slump. If they don't beat Wolves and they don't beat Chelsea and they come to White Hart Lane, then I believe we will get... A... Yeah, but I, yeah, and I, but I, don't think, I don't think we're better than them. I don't think we're better no. than Arsenal. But we, we will get a draw. I think we will draw 2-2 two -two again. But if, if they go and beat Wolves, get a bit of confidence, and then they beat Chelsea as well, they are back in the title race. They are. So That's true. I think I think then we probably lose, especially if Porro's out injured. So it all depends for me what Arsenal do the next couple of games. If they don't, if they drop points in one of those games, then for me, City have won the league because then City can go four, five points clear. They're not going to catch that. So if they come to White Hart Lane off the back of two wobbly results... Yeah, they won't mm. beat us. They won't. We'll, we'll finish them off. We will. We will officially end their title campaign. It'll be great. Yeah. But if they beat you... Wolves and they beat Chelsea, then I think we should worry a lot because they are good. Let's not disrespect them. They are a good team. They, they, they are. are. No two ways about it. Yeah. They are. They have had two. They're they just have been in the title race. Just jobs. Yeah, <laughs> they're good for the bottle jobs. <laughs> I mean, do you know the other thing that would be good though is obviously Liverpool win, City win their games. 
Arsenal win their next two games and then lose against us and we destroy their season. That would be even better. Go on, Charlie. I think we are writing off Liverpool here because they've got a really easy run. No, not really easy, but they've got an easy run. They don't have a really hard run. They're playing they're playing Wolves, West Ham, Everton, Fulham, Aston Villa and uh, Spurs. So, I mean, like, it's not the hardest. I mean, like, I think we can't write Liverpool off Liverpool. Liverpool ain't on form at the moment, mate. Liverpool still, are not scoring goals at the minute. They're still Liverpool. No, no, you don't, still Liverpool. don't write them off. I know that. But, I mean, who was it they just lost against? Was it Palace? Yeah. Something like that. Yeah. yeah. Liverpool still, are not looking... They're not looking great, Liverpool but you can't write them off. You no, can't like, write them off. Yeah, but then that's like saying you can't write Arsenal off either because technically they can still get there and do it. But Liverpool at the moment, no. Nah, I'm not... To, out of all the games we got, I think Liverpool is the one we might spend the best, stand the best chance of actually winning because up front, Dan, they are just absolutely shocking at the minute. Dan, I think, I think we've got to look at the teams the way they're playing as well, right? If you look at Arsenal, yeah. the second half against Villa, they were rubbish. Arsenal were rubbish second half against Villa. Una Villa changed it in Tata. Tata. Right, second half against Bayern Munich, Arsenal looked flat to me. It didn't look yeah. like a team that was going for it, that free-flowing football game. First half, they the did. Race. They look good. They look good, but um, the last three games I've watched Arsenal, they're not that team we've seen previously, OK? So there's a bit of a performance issue. Is it pressure? You look at Liverpool, they've been wobbling for a while, right? They've been wobbling mm. for a few games. Whereas when you look at City, I know they went out against Madrid but City were the better team on the night. Penalties are penalties. Mm -hmm. City were the better team. They just missed chances. City are finding form. City are finding a groove. Arsenal and Liverpool are hitting a bit of a... Uh, they're, hit, they're hitting a, a bumpy patch. road. So, yeah, City are doing what they do every year. This is what they do, isn't that, it? That's what I was about to say. And, and then yeah. run away with it, don't they? They always just plod along, keep themselves in it as such. And, and half the time, they go along almost unnoticed, apart from a game here or there. And then when it comes to April, every time, March, April, all of a sudden, City just go, right, come on, mate, let's get out of first gear. And they go into second and third gear. And <laughs> they just walk with it after that. They, they do it year after year. I mean, City, I wanted them to do the treble. Mainly so they could literally just turn around now and every Man U fan has to shut up. But even if they go and win four on the trot now, it still shuts up Man U, doesn't it? Mm. So you reckon basically that if it all goes tits up for Arsenal and everything and all that, we can do them and it they're basically out of it completely, totally ruin their season? We can draw. I don't think we'll beat them. I don't think we're good enough up front and I, and I think we're, we're always going to concede a goal, so I don't think we'll beat them. Okay, right. Other question, and seeing as you're the later one here, I've already asked these two about it, so I'll come to you on this one. I mean, I think you already know what I'm going to show you. The dirty picture I sent you last night. <laughs> <laughs> this has got to be a... Are you, are you telling me he's had more successful <laughs> dribbles than Foden? It's, it's, Don't it's ask me, true. mate. I did not write it. I did not write it. <laughs> I'm only going by what someone... Uh, me. <laughs> I, I know, I know, I know. This is false. I know this is false. It's got to be. It's got to be. Or it's Go old. On. It's old data. He's, he's bloody shit, man. He's rubbish. What's he doing at Spurs? It's it's embarrassing. I've, I've been saying the day. Do you know what the day we signed him and people went on Sky Sports Spurs fans saying fifty yeah, no brainer, um, good bit of business, uh, fifty million pounds if you want to sign him, no brainer. You know, really happy with it. I sat there thinking. Are you all out of your mind? Are you just saying this to look good and sound good? And you, you're just trying to make everyone like you by, by being really, really positive about <laughs> your accepting. We got rid of Lucas Moura to bring in this guy. Are we taking the piss? Like, are we actually, is this, is this it? Is this what we're doing here? He's just, he's just the German Dan Juma. He's the German Dan Juma. It's another <laughs> stupid deal. And every, he's a and poor man. Everyone got excited, even Charlie. I was arguing with Charlie about it. He's come on my show and tried to debate me on this. I'm like, Charlie, what, what planet are you on? Right? Yeah, Charlie. Pe pe oh. People yeah. just want to always praise and never criticize, and, and, and everything's wonderful. No top six club wants him. No top six club would touch him. No top 10 club would probably touch this guy. If we played a 4 4 2, right? If we played a 4 4 2. <laughs> 
Yeah. I'm really happy at Spurs. Yeah, because no one else wants you. We've given you a job. Of course you're happy here. Exactly. We're used to sitting on the bench at Leipzig. Of course you're happy here. You yeah. can do what you want, you heard... miss open goals, and you start again next game. You got... It's a great gig. I mean, Have you heard the other news that's come out, though? I mean, stuff I've been reading this morning. I mean, we all know it's press conference and all that, yeah. But if you see who the other one Spurs are supposedly looking at as the option to go for instead of him. Let me guess. Anthony Solanke, Marshall. right? Oh. Anthony oh, Marshall. Oh. Yeah, if we saw Marshall. I'm, 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 for about I'm... eight months. Ellie, Anthony Marshall. Jesus Anthony God. Marshall. How do I assess him? Pants. Shit. Shit. <laughs> P-A-N-T-S. Shit. Pants. <laughs> and he hasn't played for them. So he must be so unfit, unbelievably fit. Because if you don't have match fitness, he's rubbish when he's got match fitness. It doesn't really matter. <laughs> Does he ever have match no. fitness? I mean, Charlie, he got Anthony it. Marshall. Saying he's rubbish with it. He's rubbish with match fitness and he's rubbish without it. But he's well, worked. he actually had a lot of potential when he came to Man U because he was looking very good. But then Ndombele was meant to be the best young midfielder in Europe at the time. So look, I think every, that says it all. Every footballer can look good for five minutes. <laughs> exactly. I, I mean, Charlie, YouTube. Anthony Marshall. On YouTube. Yeah, I, 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 I put a comment on uh, Brian's video saying, if we get onto your Marshall, we have to get a rehabilitation centre for players that have done crap <laughs> at their old clubs. I mean, like, this is going nowhere. We're just going for players that had potential. I know I said I wanted them, but after these couple of games, I'm completely worn out. I've, I've literally done a 360 with my mind. I think you've seen the light. Well done. Yeah, I've seen the light. the light. He's working well. I, I had a dream. No, <laughs> seriously, man, this is just going like, you... nowhere. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it, <laughs> we just keep getting linked with players that have done nothing, and and we we will c- c- contend for the title. I mean. Like, even like Solanke, I know he's been doing great this season, but last season he wasn't doing crap. The season before he wasn't doing anything. Like all these players we're getting linked with, we should be linked with somebody that actually can, we know that can do something that's been doing it for three, four seasons in a row and not somebody that has just been great for one season and the rest of the season just been doing nothing. I mean, yeah. still? Yeah, sign him. Perfect. Bring him in. <laughs> Sell some. There's a replacement sorted. I mean, imagine... Setting on the Marshall on, on, on the left side of the pitch. That's, that's the most crippled, that's the most injury prone <laughs> side of football. Kudazewski, Veliz, Solomon, Richarlison, Brennan Johnson, Timo, for me, none of them, none of them are good enough to wear a Spurs jersey. None of them. And, and when people want to defend Brennan Johnson or but Solomon's injured, this is my reply. Just go I'm back and think of what we were about. Just think of what we used to be. Klinsman, Sheringham. Berpatov, King, Defoe. Kane, Son. Right? That is the quality Spurs. If, if there's one thing Spurs have always had is quality players up front. We've always had them. Go back to the Clive Allens, the Linekers. Go back to the, the yeah. days of Crooks. We've always had Greaves. We've always had top, top players across the top. Yeah. This is the worst crop of players across the top I've seen at Spurs in a very, very long time. Honestly, None of the players I mentioned should be at Spurs, even even as back. Maybe keep Brennan as a backup because he's young. Maybe, maybe, right? But yeah, give him a line none of them on the bench. Ellie, he's let me Ellie, 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 <laughs> Ellie. Let me read something to you. Let me read something to you both, right? It's just it's read... proven that he's good off the bench. That's it. I want to. I want to read it. something That's to you. That's his star quality. <laughs> it, it, and uh, yeah, he's good at coming off the bench. For, yeah, but only get only get only against the lesser teams though. Not against the top teams. Yeah, the top teams. No, he doesn't perform because the top I wanna, teams I have show got you better defenders. That's why. Right, listen to this. Listen to this. Okay. These these are the top goal. These are the top goal scorers this season, right? So in first place, it's Cole Palmer and Eric Haaland, both on twenty. In second place, it's Ollie Watkins on nineteen, and in third place on seventeen goals, it's joint Isak, Solanke, and Salah. Not one Spurs player in that top six and yeah. and Solanke, Isak, Watkins, Halland and Palmer were all signed in the last two years. In the last two years, who have we signed? Richie, <laughs> Johnson, Timo, Valise and Solomon. All yeah. the players we signed, not only are they not in that top six, 
they're not even in double digits. They, they haven't even got to 10 goals. So they're not even halfway close. What are we doing, guys? What what are Spurs Richie doing has, when they're signing? Richie's got 10 goals. Not in the league. No, is he? Not... Has he got nine? Has he got nine in the league and one in the League Cup? I'll tell you now. Is that right? I know I'm, he's I'm just going... against Fulham. Yeah, but uh, Son, Sonny's got 15 and he's got nine assists, hasn't he? Sorry, sorry. I did, yeah, mm-hmm. hold on one minute. I, I, one minute. I didn't mention the son's name. I didn't mention no. the son's name. I'm just looking at players. Yeah, on, I'll on get that, you. I'll get you. If you, look at, if you look at the top six Premier League goal scorers, five of them out of the six were signed in the last two years. Only Salah's yeah. there who's old school. If you look at all our, our new signings, they're not even in double digits. Oh, no. None of Signings are right. So when people say to me, "Oh, the recruitment's better," I, 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 I say to myself, "Is it? Is it? We've signed five. We've signed five attackers. Add Madison as well. He hasn't scored double digits. Six. We've signed six attackers. None of them are scoring goals. You you got to factor in that Johnson. I'm not making any excuse for him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Got, no, I'm not making any excuse here. You got to factor in that he came in January. So he was he was three or four months behind the other players. We signed we signed Johnson in the summer, really. I thought we signed him in January. Uh, maybe that's I got Timo. That wrong. That's Timo. Oh, Timo, yeah. Timo. Okay, yeah. Timo, Timo. He's never going to get into double figures anyway. Regardless, he just okay. Goal, just a quick one, bring in there. Elias. Thanks a lot, mate. It's much appreciated. Uh, Stell, Ellie, remember what I told you all about Eric Dyer? He obviously made a point to use both. <laughs> I don't know. Oh my god! Win, win, win the Champions League, then come back to us. Let's see yeah. what he does in the semis against Real Madrid. I've got, um, I've got a funny story so thanks to for your tell super you chat, about mate. That. It's much appreciated. Go, Eric go on, Dyer, bloody hell! Come on. <laughs> well, someone's put a question on here that I think is a very good question. I mean, when I asked who I would like to have three months ago, this is one player I definitely mentioned. Definitely played the way the other day, Ronnie. What are you saying here? Now saying we want Isaac, could we get him, guys? Charlie, I don't. I don't think we'll get him. I think he would like to stay at Newcastle himself. I think he thinks he has a good future with Newcastle. Levy won't pay the money for him because he'll. They want a lot of money for him. I, but I do think Newcastle will have to sell him because of the FFP charges. So I'm a bit hesitant on what they will do with him. I don't know if they'll keep him or sell him or just sell somebody else. So, but if he does get sold. I don't think he'll go to Tottenham. He'll go to like Arsenal or go to like a bigger club because not a bit like like City or something. Because I don't think he wants to go to Tottenham himself. He doesn't. You know what I mean? I think. Mm-hmm. I think we would love him. I don't think Levy wants to pay the money for him, and I don't think he wants to go to Tottenham. That's that's what I think. I mean, if we was to get him, at least he'd be eighty million. I mean, Ellie, Isaac, mm. do you reckon we could get him? Do you reckon we should? Um, I'm, I've got I'm mixed emotions with this, right? Because if we if we're showing any ambition, right? He's the type of profile player we should buy. I think he's is he scored seventeen this season. Is that correct? Yeah, I'm not yeah. sure how so many he's, he's in the top. He's, he's in the top six of of goal scorers. I just read it in, out in a, in a struggling side. Remember, because they've struggled for quite a while with injuries and. You know, and he scored a lot of worldy goals on his own. Um, and he's a very clever player. But he's got very good vision. And he knows where the goal is. So, we should really sign that player. But I don't think Newcastle will let him go. Because why would they let him go? I can't see any logic for them to sell their prize asset. But the FFP charges, that's the only thing they'll have to... That's yeah, the but I'm, to I think they'll count. target other players to get rid of. Like Almiron, maybe Gamarish. Possibly, I'm not saying for hundred percent because he's a very good player as well. But they might sell some of their lesser players and mm-hmm. keep. If I, if I was the chairman of Newcastle, I'll say no way, Jose. He's not going anywhere. Okay, well, just a picture that Stell has showed me here: top scorers, Carl yeah. Palmer, level with Harland, Ollie Watkins, Isaac. Yeah, it'd definitely be one I want to go for. I. Still, do you reckon we could get him? Do you reckon we should go for him? Um, people in the comments saying how many players have scored more than ten for City, Stelios. Haaland's top of the charts. I mean, I don't, I don't know what language we're speaking here. People just trying to well, argue for the sake of it. The facts are the facts. Haaland is the top goal scorer. Right? 
They've got a bloody good goal scorer. Um, <laughs> yeah, we should. Of course, we should go for Isak, but we're not going to get him. No, no. I think, I, th- I think. Look, if Arsenal go in compared to Spurs, let's just be real. I hate them, <laughs> but they're in a better position <clears throat> than us. He'll probably more likely go to Arsenal if, if if it was between us two. If Liverpool and Spurs were in for him, he'd probably go more to Liverpool. So we're not going to beat Arsenal or Liverpool to him. But will he want to leave Newcastle if they get back into Europe and there's money coming into that club? I don't know. I think he'll stay there another year or two. I really do. Wouldn't surprise and, me. Um, he's only and, 24 and now... as well still. He's only 24, so he's still quite young, isn't he? Yeah. He's young. He's young, Yeah. yeah. Uh, and and do you know, you know what? You know when he goes in on goal and he opens up his body. I'm not saying he's Thierry Henry, but he, he's got a lot of mannerisms of Thierry Henry. You know that the way he opens up and scores, he's he's, he's got similar traits. Obviously, he's not on. Nice. Me, but no, of he's got a lot of traits. He's got a lot of traits. I think as well, like when we're, we're not really going to be able to pull in what we thought we would now because um, you've got. Liverpool, who are probably going to crash out of Europe tonight. They're 3-0 down already. Man Mm -hmm. City are out. Arsenal are out. Whatever coefficient we thought we had for fifth place getting Champions League, that's That's gone. gone. That's gone. gone. I said that at the start of the show. That's done and dusted now. Plus Dortmund Dortmund knocking out a Spanish club only increases the German coefficient. So The Germans have got it now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We're 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 not going to get that. So we need to get fourth and... If we get fourth, but then again, do you know what? I'm talking rubbish. When, when has Champions League ever helped us? What, when have we ever done anything with it? No, I don't think it's that comes to us. I don't think we can get him. No, we should go no. for him, but I don't think we'll get him. No, no, that's well. We'll get him. There's a couple of comments come up on the. I know I'm a bit behind everyone. I'm presuming these are aimed at you, big boss man. Johnson and Madders have only been here five minutes. Richie Solanke has, has only been at Bournemouth for five Stone minutes. Skull Palmer's only been at Chelsea for five minutes. These are excuses, guys. Yeah, I've just given you a list of players that have only been at their clubs for five minutes and they're almost at 20 goals. So it's just excuses. This, this is what I mean at Spurs. I'm not trying to attack you, big boss man. But as a fan base, we don't like facts. We go off emotion, right? He's only been in five minutes. You know, give him a chance. Solanke's only been... A, look at Van de Ven. He's only been in five minutes. He's unbelievable. He's yeah. unbelievable. Vicario's only been in five minutes. He's brilliant. Right, they're, so that's very true. They're they're like our Allison and Van Dyke signings in a way. All right, Van exactly. Dyke had credibility because he was at Southampton, and everybody could see that he could be world class because he he played mm-hmm. brilliant under Poch. And then they got bringing Allison, who not not everybody knew, not everybody knew. If they if they did, if they say they did, they're lying. And he's been world class for them. Yeah, and we've got Vicario and Van de Ven. If we build around those two, right, and also what I wanted to point out, right, Man City were, were not nobodies, but they hardly won a trophy. They were a bit like us, three or four trophies, two trophies, one trophy, yeah? They didn't have much history like ours. As Our history is better. But they got the money and they got the power and then they got the trophies. So why don't... Levy's going for more investors, isn't he? If One sec, Brian, check your YouTube, mate. Uh, not YouTube, sorry, check your WhatsApp. Sorry, Ellie. Go on. No, I'm just saying, like, Man City seized the power, didn't they? And they're winning out absolutely. They're wiping the floor with everybody, right? Because they've got the money, they've got the power, they've got the best coach in the world, Pep Guardiola, right? Who knows what... And you hear, you hear ha- Next Ange, time. what he says. He says, mm-hmm. I'm only copying Pep, mate. But we haven't got the technical play, so we need we need to invest in better technical players so that they can play Ange ball as he sees it. So he doesn't bloody need that remote control that he's always on about. We need better okay. technicians in the team to support the other technicians that we've got in the team. Because Van der Ven technically brilliant, the mm-hmm. a fantastic goalie. What what other player can you say you'll put your house on and say he's world class? Well, no, just out of quick one thing here. I mean, still, you're yeah. cherry picking, mate. You're cherry picking. Who said? Who said that? Big boss man. I'm presuming this is yeah, but, you. Yeah, he says no, you're no, cherry no. picking. Big, big, yeah, look, look, he's just upset because I blocked him from my channel ages ago because he came on. He was super rude. I don't mind if he's on okay. other channels. That's cool. But he's he's oh, just trying no to trick me. 
yeah, yeah, yeah. I, 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 big, big boss man can say it once. If I'm cherry picking, how am I cherry picking? Because I said you've just put, you've just put facts down, mate. You've just put the facts down. So we, 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 can... we, we have a squad of 24. That's what you're allowed to submit to the league 24, 25, whatever the number. 25. How many ready made players have we signed out of the 24? Maybe three or four, maybe five at the most. Not even 20% of the players we signed were ready made. Now, oh. If that is a difficult thing to understand, I can't help you, right? You've got the club you deserve. We win nothing. We're called Spursy. We're called Bottle Jobs. If you want that to change, if you want Spurs to actually be the club that Ellie just described that was bigger and better than Man City, because we were, Man City were nobodies. They were a nothing yeah. football club. Spurs were, a, were massive compared to them. If you want us to go back to that, then don't talk to me about, oh, give, give them a chance. Give Timo a chance. Mm. Give Solomon a chance. Oh, but we signed ready-made players too. Okay, keep keep spinning your narrative. And every year, every year, you've got Stelios here saying, it's happened again, hasn't it? It's happened again. We're still not winning trophies. We're still getting battered at that club. We're still getting schooled by Wolves and Fulham. It keeps happening. That's, that's all I'm saying. If you don't like it, Fair enough. Respect you. You can have your opinion. You can each to their own at the end of the day, isn't it? Alex. Right. We have another guest on here. Hang on a sec. Alex, Mr. Box Office, how are we doing this morning? Oh, well, afternoon, sorry. How are we doing this afternoon? You'll be surprised to know I'm actually in a good mood because, well, it's not just because oh. of Arsenal. Or just I'm just fed up of... Uh, I'm glad. I'm so glad that Arsenal are out, but I think, I think <laughs> I'm, I'm keeping my powder dry because I think they still can win the, the Premier League still. You know what I mean? Because that, mm. I think there's going to be still twists and turns on that. Hopefully, Man City do it, and I, just, I think Liverpool are completely just um, uh, fell out as well, lost steam, unfortunately. And uh, I'm, I'm sorry that striker that they've got. Um, I think it's, was it Nerv, was it Neves Nunes. or whatever his name? Nunes. Nunes. Or whatever his name is. If I'm going to well, criticise Richarlison, <laughs> if I'm going to criticise Richarlison, I'm sorry. What, what, where's 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 um where's that guy? I'm sorry. Well, you know what I mean. My mate Mike. Who's a Liverpool supporter? He comes on here. Uh, what's his nickname that he calls him? Noon he calls him Noodles. That's it. My mate Mike calls him Noodles because he's he runs like his legs are noodles. <laughs> I mean, on, he's, like, he's got everything, but he's, he's, he's and that's a Liverpool supporter. Exactly. He literally is turned into like, and, and trust me, like I'm going to do a show tonight because I've got a lot to say, a lot to say. Because um, yeah. one thing I will say, big up to Spurs Kings TV, yeah. Because I had to really, like, I literally had to spell it out to Jay. And listen, I'm not having to go at Jay. I like Jay. I like Jay. Yeah, I know certain people don't like him, but I like Jay. Yeah, because he, he, at least he turns up. Yeah, and he's passionate. Yeah, but I just yeah. think it just summed it all up because I was explaining it to the blue in the face what, why I can't back this process at the moment. And thank you to Asthmatic. He literally had to explain it to him properly because he just kept on saying, or we're backing players, we're backing him with players, we're backing him with players. I said, I kept on saying to him, it don't make a blind bit of difference. And we, we, what hit the nail on the head, what he said, that, that validating my point straight away, he said, well, if, uh, if, the, if you can't believe in the manager, why should the ownership believe in the manager? And I was like, wait a minute here, that's the other way, it should be the other way around. No, the ownership need to believe in the manager. Then yeah. I believe in the manager. You know what I mean? So it's like, why yeah. are you telling me yeah, this the on me? playing for him. Why are you keep on saying? Why are you saying it about me? Why are you saying it about me? You know what I mean? Why are you saying it's on me? Why is it on me? Well, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't um, appoint the manager. I don't sack the managers. So why, why is it on me? Why is it on me? And that, then I yeah. knew straight away. I was like, yeah, you're just, you're just, nah, sorry, mate. You know what I mean? You, you've lost, you've lost straight away when you said that. It's on them. I don't get paid. I'd love to get paid that much money and fail. I'd love to. Where's my check? Where is my check? <laughs> the way he was talking about it, it's like, I'm in charge of the club. I was like, bro, I'm not in charge of the club because I'll I, 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 I be rinsing the money. I'll be in Jamaica by it now, bruv. Enjoying, <laughs> enjoying music, bro. Yeah? <laughs> On the beach. Jamaican and the rice, cotton. bro, every single time, bro. You know what I mean? I'll be enjoying yeah. my life every single time and just leave this club to, to, to float, you know, to, yeah. to, 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 to lose. And that's it. You know what I mean? But like, like it's like it's like he's saying to me it's all on me. And I was like, wait a minute here, no, 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 no. I, I, how is it on me? So that's when I was like, no, you're talking rubbish. And he kept on talking about, oh, we've backed him with players, we've done this. Oh, he's got four years, and I'm like, bro, 
what is four years? You've got somebody who's an Arsenal fan beside you right now that you sh- is seen, even though he's gone through a four-year project, and yes, he's got a good point, they should be winning something to this season. And I understand why Arsenal fans are going mad, right? Mm. But it's like uh, Arteta, they gave him a new contract to say, we back you, we back you. Now, like I said, I've not proven my point. Until next season, the season after that, I'll prove my point. Because I keep on, I'm hearing now that noise is saying, if he does this, he does that, he should be out. And it's the culture of our club because we know what our owners are like. If we were like Liverpool, that we've seen success, we've seen them back a manager, stick with a guy when they've gone through bad times and, you know, hold their nerve, I don't think we see this, um, this divide. And I, if people can't see the fact that um, um, we don't see the divide from the fan base, I don't know what you're seeing. I think you're just you're only in your own circles. It is a mm-hmm. big division because of the the way that our, we run our club, and we don't yeah. back our managers. Not backing our managers with monies and players, backing our managers through bad times and sticking with the decision that we made in June when we hired them, and it, we, it's proven. It is proven. So, am I wrong? So you can't ask me I to back a manager so. when I don't know when they if they back the manager. You can't you can't tell me. I get a point. Right, out of question here on the side, again, I think this one's aimed at you, Stel, seeing as it has your name on it. Still, I think you're a bit harsh on Kulu. I don't think we're playing him in the correct position. Right, let me start on this one, yeah? All right, Jay. <laughs> I get where you're coming from there, and I'm the first one to say we are playing Kulusevsky in the wrong position. He's not a right winger. He plays attacking midfield central for Sweden. They put him as the false nine or the attacking midfielder in Juventus. He works much better. But we're not going to do it. We're not going to do it with him. And he has been playing terrible. So he is another player that if we got offered money, I would sell him. Still, anyone else? Uh, um, I, I don't think um, that Hulu fits what we're trying to do. That's my issue with him because <laughs> if we're going to... I thought Kudu worked well in a Conte system where we were a bit more deeper, happy to give up possession and then counter. And then mm. he would link the play between the defence to midfield quite well um, because a lot of space would open up when we did that. I think in in um in a team where you've got to play one-touch, two-touch football and you've got the ball quick for it to work... I don't think that Kulusevski has got the pace to keep up with what Ange wants. It's clear to me, like when Spurs, when Spurs play good up to Ange, we move the ball really quick and we do it one, two touch. That means that once you move it, you then have to, once you pass it, you then have to move forward to receive the next pass or give the option to receive the next pass to pull the other team out of shape or to receive and, and continue and, and continue the, the progress of the play. With Kulu, he just doesn't have the speed to do what we do, in my opinion. And I think it's a bit like Hoybier, right? You see Hoybier, people slag him off a lot. When, when I actually think about it, Hoybier is a really good player, but in a certain I, way. I in don't a certain think he's way. as bad as people make out. And well, I've said that, it, that today. It, 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 the difference between class, quality, and a player that's just good is consistency and adaptability, right? Kane, whether he plays for Southgate, Poch, Nuno, not Nuno because he down tools, Conte, Jose, Tuchel, whoever he plays, Kane performs. That means he can mm-hmm. adapt to any system, any type of role, what you want from the striker, he can adapt. That's a, that's a, that's a quality player. Hoybier can't adapt. If you, if you say to Hoybeek, sit in front of the defence, be a destroyer, break up the play, and as soon as you win it, just lay it off to players to then do the attacking stuff, Hoybeek is actually a really, really good player. That's why, if you go back and watch us when we played with Jose, Hoybeek was actually bloody good under Jose Mourinho. He really was. Best season, bloody yeah. hell. Mm-hmm. He does a job was, that's, why I, that's why it's I still... called Queen Ellie Hoybeek. But, but now, <laughs> but, but here's the problem. Yeah, Ellie Hoybeek. Here's the problem now, right? <laughs> Now, we want our defensive mid to do something different because the system has changed. We yeah. want, big up, Ryan. We yeah, want our holding mid now to, one, 
break up the play. Two, travel with the ball forward, which he's not too bad at because we've seen him do it for his country, right? But also to drop deep edge of the box, receive the ball, check your shoulder on the half turn, spin the man and play. Or drop mm -hmm. into the box, receive it, play it back to the goalie or switch the play across to the wing back. That's where Hoiberg falls apart. He can't play up from the back. He doesn't have that in his game. He doesn't have that one, two touch football consistently. And he can't, on the half turn, he's not good enough. So yeah. the number six we Isn't... need, we need a mixture of Basuma and Hoiberg. Whereas you look at Basuma, mm. he can do the receiving out from the back. He can turn on the half turn. He can progress the ball, but he can't destroy the play. He can't get out there and... He doesn't read. He doesn't read the attack. I didn't steal his. I didn't steal his. Alex, one minute. Alex, one minute, one minute. Let me just finish. So, the point I'm trying to say is, Kulu is like Hoybier. He's good, really good in a certain way. But as soon as we, we're trying to play a different way, a different system, where now people are saying Hoybier is not good enough, it's the system that doesn't suit him. And he's not good enough to adapt to it because he hasn't got mm. what we need for him to adapt. I think Kulu's the same. This type of football, I know Kudu likes playing this type of football. I don't think he's got the pace for it. That's 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 he, that's why I'm saying Kudu's not good enough. Now you see what you say there, still, yeah. Yeah. I've been I've been saying for it, Hoiberg isn't good enough overall for what we need. But I've also been quite a defender of him as well, and I think that man gets ten times more stick than he actually needs to get. Yeah. Now the way I see we play at the moment, I keep if they want to call it flip-flopping from side to side, so what sort of DM do we need? Do we need that anchor man or do we need that DM deep line playmaker sort of thing in one? Both. So, some one. games, yeah. I, that's what I'm about to say. Like, some games, I just think we need that out and out anchor man. We've got him. Hoiberg. And he's going to do better there, I think, than Basuma because Basuma has been absolutely crap there because I think everybody will agree he's a box-to-box -box midfielder. But and no, this is really now. Then I disagree. But if we okay, but if we're talking about a DM and a playmaker, we've already bloody got it. Benton Core, I've said it enough times. He done it three and four years straight at Juventus. I can agree with that. Team. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can agree with that. I think, I think, I, I think we need, that. I think we need somebody. I think we need midfielders that are adaptable to all the three positions at the moment. I think, I think, really, all through the team, I think we need players that can adapt to different positions. That can, like, can, when someone goes out, like when we do this um, overload, someone can um, back them up. You know what I mean? You know, and I think that's Alex. Huh? Hang on a second, mate. Just something I want to say. Big boss man. Udoji is pretty much ready made. No, he no, he's is not. not. <clears throat> he's rough and ragged. He was very good in Italy, playing through Dinesi that season. He's not a very good defender. Same as Poro isn't a very good defender. But one thing Udoji is, he's excellent getting forward on the ball. He's got a good pass on him. And if he was even played out wide wing, out wide wing back, he ain't got a bad cross on him either. But yeah. that man is far from ready-made. He, he, he might be a diamond and he's looking very good. But big boss man is not. I mean, we I'm signed him. We that. signed him at 20 years old. Not ready made. Not at we all. Signed, we, we signed him at 20 years old with no Premier League not experience. How, how is that ready-made? Like, this not is what I mean with big boss man. He's in La La Land. Is it, I think I think the thing is though this season's kind of over um, over it's what well, uh, it's, it's changed everybody's expectations really to be honest with you but my point is at the moment with this squad at the moment I think the problem is I think you've got a Doji and Poro that can you know play in different positions like going into that midfield inverted midfield um, uh, in that for, for fullback position so they've got the ability to do that. Um, I think Song can play in different positions. People can agree or disagree whether he can play forward and that's it. Johnson, there's still question mark. And certain players, I think I do agree with Bintercore. I still think he's growing on me, even though he disappointed me the last game, to be honest with you. Because I, I, I look at him a little bit more, more harder now because I think he's got mm -hmm. something more than some of these players have got. But I look at the other ones and I just think, other than Saar in the midfield and some of the defenders at the moment... I don't see them having to adapt to different positions. When when someone moves out their position, can they cover? You know what I mean? Like, um, for instance, 
you know, when it was under, I think maybe the example will say under Poch. And I don't like going back there, but I just... Like Ben when, Davis can play on the left, but he yeah. can also cover the middle. Obviously, that, that's the thing, yeah. And when someone that. goes out their position, they cover that position. I think that's what we're missing at the moment. I think there's too much of that. And I think there's just too many people, too many players that are only can do their job. You know what I mean? I think Kulu has got more ability than he believes in for me. I don't think yeah. it's his pace that is the problem at the moment. I think he just needs to believe in himself a little bit more. I think he needs to have a little bit more arrogance about him and a more, more swag about him and just be a bit more... He, d- don't use your bit... confidence as a way of doing it because you don't have to have pace to be a great player. You don't. You really don't. You can... But when Modric you can sit there and lose that. 4-1 and turn around and say, but we <laughs> we made it in life. Yeah, but I think... Know, look, my point right. is, is that you're, you don't need... You don't need pace. To, you just need to look at Modric, yeah, and still made mm-hmm. a great point, right? His stats in terms of create. No, listen, I don't do stats, yeah, but when what, what still said was quite quite interesting. The stats that Kulazeski is doing at the moment in terms of creating are the same that Modric is doing, right? Mm, okay, right. Uh, before... Hang on, Alex. Hang on, Brian. You've waited. Hello, mate. How are we doing? And I take it you're definitely happy from last night as well. Go for gold. Uh, I'm tired, but uh, good and tag everyone. Good and tag. Um, <laughs> yeah. Hope good everyone is. Uh, Brian, good hope tag. everyone is feeling good today. It's just uh, days like this. So listen, when, when we, we when we haven't got Tottenham and Tottenham, we're coming off a bad Tottenham loss. There is nothing better than seeing Arsenal lose points on the league, and then do what they do in the Champions League. The, the, the only thing I'm really saying about it today, and I've been, I've been waiting for this to happen, is for the last few weeks, maybe months, I've seen so many Arsenal fans, and I don't know if I want to call them fans or whatever on social media, actually mm-hmm. trying to compare Saka to Gareth Bale and saying Saka oh, is a higher him. standard than Bale was at the same time. And I'm like, are you... Are you having a laugh? Are you... Um, and against Bayern Munich, apart from the goal, he went absolutely missing. Gareth ba- how anyone, how any... Honestly, I may come out with some wild... And we all may come out with some wild ta- um, takes and, and thoughts of our football club. But for people, Arsenal fans, to genuinely have been saying and believing that Shaka, uh, Saka, Saka sorry, is at the same level that Gareth Bale was... <laughs> has got to be one of the most straight-up deluded things I've ever heard. Um, listen, I, what I will say, the one thing I was... I, I went on We Are Tottenham TV and I spoke very, very open... Not openly, uh, strongly about, Dan, what I've spoken about on your channel first, about the Europa... Uh, one in the Europa League over the Champions League yeah. and the reasons why. And hell must be freezing over because there's been a hell of a lot of comments when they clip me and for once about 95% of people agree with me. Um, now, mm-hmm. as you were saying, I heard it before. And I just want to say, big up, big boss man. He, I, I know uh, some people don't get on with him. I he, he's a top, 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 top guy. Um, so I just want to say, and to everyone else that's in the chat. Um, but yeah, like I said, I, I I spoke very openly about how I think Europa League is the way we've got to go. We're trying to run before we can walk. Um, and now it's like you said in the the show before I came on, Dan. It's now forget. Um, forget fifth being Europe, and I'm, I'm, I'm delighted mm-hmm. that it is because we have it. We've had it for years that top four is top four, and a lot of people go on about it shouldn't be the top four; it should be the top two or whatever. Top four is top four, and if Spurs can't get into it, or any team, or any team, not just Tottenham, but we're using Tottenham here, then we don't deserve to be in it. And we don't do. What, 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 do we go into the Champions League because we play the most attacking football? Is that now the 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 new coefficient will be whoever plays the most strong uh, sexiest football, whoever has the most turnovers, gets into the chat. No, it's top four is top four, um, and it looks like Europa League is where we're going. It's still a bonus from last season, and we've got an opportunity to use our youth and maybe even our fringe players. Someone commented on the uh, Tottenham uh, we are Tottenham TV one today, saying. Uh, we could use our fringe players as well, and it's and it's not. It, it's actually a very good point that I haven't been saying. By the way, mm-hmm. I've put the brand new "Stop Crying Arteta" song in one of the comments that someone <laughs> tweeted last night. It's fucking brilliant. 
it's fucking brilliant. It's a few down. You'll see my uh, my comment. Um, but this is the thing: we get the chance to now use the um, to now use the fringe players, use the youth mm-hmm. players, and give off. But maybe uh, listen. For our first few teamers have to go out there. They have to. But we don't have to send them out on mass. Everyone's going. Oh, I'd rather play Tuesday, Wednesday, Saturday, Sunday rather than Thursday, Sunday. I'm like, okay, it may be bad for 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 travelling fans and what what have you, but people are going on about how this is going to knacker our players out. And I'm like, are you not listening to me? I don't want the first teamers to be going away in the Europa League. I don't really want the first teamers to be playing at home in the Europa League. We've got a big enough squad. This is what it's for. If you want to concentrate on the league, then do it with resting uh. Resting people in the Europa League. You've got the prime time. What he did against Fulham, where we went out of that Carabao Cup so quickly, he has the competition to do it in. And uh, let's see what happens. It does look like Europa. And, um, yeah, I'll end by saying just once again, guten tag, guten tag. Um, and stop crying Arteta is a, a great one. Oh, dear. Yeah. Totally, totally agree with you on that. I mean, last night, I must admit, I mean, I watched that with uh, Alan and Still on there. And yeah, with Eric Dyer as man of the match, you couldn't ask on, for any better, really, could you, in that aspect? Mate, if he goes and wins well, the trophy, this, the thing, that, this is the thing that makes me laugh, Dan. Someone tweeted me, or someone sent me a private message yesterday going, you look at all these 90-odd players that have gone away and won a trophy once they've left Tottenham. If Eric Dyer goes and does it within a few months... Of leaving us from like being the being at the bottom of the bottom of Tottenham by player by, by fans wanting him out, not being good enough for whatever position we've wanted to play, and then goes to Bayern Munich and wins the biggest of them all. I'll just piss myself. I will. I will just laugh for ages. Just a quick one here, and I'll come to you, Charlie. Like Mapping says, don't you guys ever get tired talking about Tottenham? I wonder. Well, it is a Tottenham channel, so. I don't know, but Dan, yeah, go on, Dan. Can I just say because um, my camera is off. Go. When when Alex was talking about um, you don't need uh, pace. I I never said pace. I said speed. I think um, mm-hmm. I talk in coaching terminology. Kulusevski, one sec, still. I know where you're going. Kulusevski is fast. On 100 metres, he's actually faster mm. than Basuma, Benton Core, Saar, but it's his acceleration he hasn't got. But I think Stell's thinking about movement of ball. That's what he's thinking. But, but yeah. Okay, well, go on, Stell. When I use the word speed, I mean the speed of thought. So yeah. when 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 gotcha. in, in Holland, Charlie's hometown, in the IX Academy, they have something called TIPS, T-I-P-S, technical... Yeah intelligence personality and speed speed is speed of thought so how quickly do you do something so yeah it could be moving the ball when i look at when when what alex was talking about pace that's actually running speed right i'm talking about the brain how quickly it thinks and then does it kulu there's so many times i see him where you think just play it there play it there he delays he delays then I he agree. does it you're like oh kulu yeah that, that's, that's exactly and, what and, i mean and Hoybier right. does the same. Hoybier does the same. Exactly, In an Ange exactly system, you can't have that. This this system depends yeah. on that quick play. And that's that's yeah. what I mean about Kulu. Yeah. I just want you've to clarify. Got to use, you've got to have that... Um, I can't think of the word. You've, you've got to have that... Um, speed of thought. Speed, speed of thought, but it's, it's it's natural. I can't remember what it's called. I can't remember what yeah, it's called. Yeah, instinctive. 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 Yeah, that's it. Instinct. Yeah. Instinct. Here's a way to describe it how I take it, yeah? Don't mind noise in the background. My wife's just making me a coffee because I need my other hit. I've only had one coffee this morning, so I'm a bit shaky. Um, <laughs> Teddy Sheridan. Uh-huh. One player that could not do was run. He might as well have just walked everywhere. Well, he basically did. But his speed of thought was like playing a game of chess. Game of chess is something I love. I know I don't look like a chess player, but I love a game of chess because there's tactics to it. If you can think three moves ahead of your person, you can beat your person. Teddy Sheringham was the same as a player. He knew he couldn't run. He knew he was never going to do it that way. But he was always in the right place at the right time because speed of thought, he was always three moves ahead of the other person. Is that the yeah. sort of thing you're getting at? Yeah. Would everyone yeah. agree with that? What? Yeah, 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 that's it. That's it in a nutshell. Dan, I, I've been Paul and Madison, they do it really well. 
Brenton called Madison. They might not get it right. They, the pass might be under hit or in, inaccurate. But what they do is bang, bang, bang. It's, I've, it's I've got I've got to elaborate on what you said, Dan, about Teddy Sheringham. I, when I had my season tickets for 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 the for the ten years I had them before I moved to Israel, um, I went home and away, and I still haven't seen a player like Teddy Sheringham. And the, what why I say about Teddy Sheringham is I, I was there at so many games where literally we had the ball. And literally, you would hear Teddy scream for the ball. And you'd be like, well, what, what, why, why, what's the, what's the matter? And then literally, he had seen something, three, but three, literally, three or four moves, goal. He, yeah. he literally, his speed of thought, everyone speaks about how incredible it was. I think it's actually incredibly underrated how high they think it is. It's higher. Yeah. His, his football intelligence, look, he's yeah. still playing for West Ham at 40 odd. His intelligence, was, was nice and day for. I mean, we look at if if he had been a Zidane or a Del Piero or some of the, of, of the, they would be waxing lip. His football intelligence, and we've had a lot of great players before and a lot of great players since Teddy Sheringham. But when it comes to speed of thought, he would probably be in the top three players I've ever seen, ever. Yeah. Not just in Tottenham, then, his football intelligence. that's why Man U bought him when he was, what, 33? Exactly. And look, what well, he didn't win anything his first season. The Troy won player, football's player of the year and writer's player of the year, I think at 35 or 34, or maybe, yeah. maybe even a little bit older. I can't remember how old when he re-signed for us. Teddy Sheringham. And you've got to remember, Jurgen Klinsmann, when he went to Bayern, was asked, what striker do you want to come partner you? He said, Teddy Sheringham. You speak yeah. to Alan Shearer, who was your best strike partner, Teddy Sheringham. You speak to anyone that's played alongside him, they will say the greatest strike partner they played against. He was just, his football intelligence is wildly underrated. Wildly for me. For me, yeah. he's one of the most underrated strikers ever in the Premiership. I, I don't understand. It shows him. that you don't just need, a, well, but he doesn't get even brought up in a top 10 striker. Because a lot of people, I know being a striker is mainly goals. But it's about being this more is, of a complete this is, player as well. Go on, this is why I get angry with Spurs. This is why I get really pissed off with people like Levy, right? You've got Scott Munn. Who is this guy? He's a suit from Timbuktu that's come in. What's he going to do? What, 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 what's he ever done in football, this guy, other than marketing, spreadsheets, pie charts? Then you've got these other suits beneath. You look at Arsenal, right? Edu, he's, he's won the lot at Arsenal, except for European trophies. He's, he's, he's a proven player, international player. He's there doing the recruitment. You've got a brain. You've got a brain like Teddy Sheringham, who's played at the highest level, played for his country. He's won everything at Man United. Yeah. Make him, the, make, make him our football director. People like him should be the football director at Spurs. Glenn Hoddle should be running the academy. This is, this yeah. is what annoys me with Spurs. You, you've got really intelligent ex-footballers that have won trophies, have got spur, spurs in their heart. Why are they not in the club? Instead, we've got, you know, Paratici, some dodgy, you know, bloke who's who's on trial in Italy. You know, put, put him in the club. Scott Munn, some random suit from Australia. Yeah, put him in the club. I, I can't understand it, guys. Teddy Sheridan, got- would, I, I think he would have been a brilliant, a better got- person involved in recruitment. Still. The answer is because Levy does not want players like Steve Perriman either. I'll put Steve Perriman in that list. He should be there as well. He should be there. Yeah, Steve Perriman, Glenn Hoddle, they've got Spurs in their DNA. Right? Steve Perriman is the most decorated player at Spurs and he's got a fantastic podcast and he talks about how Spurs... He says about Bill Nicholson setting the tempo of the club. There's none of that anymore. We've declined. You, you know, Ellie, Ellie, you, you know what, Ellie? I've, I've started watching a lot of those. I don't know if people watch those uh, things on YouTube. So, the interviews with Simon Jordan and the new uh, set of things that uh, Jeff Sterling is doing with Football's Greatest. And, and they're really, really interesting podcasts, especially the Jeff Sterling ones. Yeah. And he's just done one with uh, Julian Lescott. And they were speaking about loads of things. And I completely forgot <laughs> that Julian Lescott actually had Glenn Hoddle as a manager at Wolves. Mm-hmm. And he speaks about it. 
and he speaks about certain things. And he said, Glenn Hoddle and his footballing brain, forget on the pitch, off the pitch, is so far superior to anything he's seen. And remember, he's worked with Mancini. He's worked with people at Man City. He was even talking about there was a, there was a game that they're playing. He said it's against Ipswich. This is before Glenn went to, to Chelsea and whatever. And he was literally saying, he was saying to his wingers, whatever happens in this game, do not come back and defend. Do not come back and defend. Just do this, 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 and this. They were playing Ipswich, who were like flying at the top of the league, flying. Within 25 minutes, they were 3 0 up. Because <laughs> Glenn Hoddle, if you listen to people when Glenn Hoddle was manager of England and that you ask England players who was the best player on the pitch, they all say Glenn Hoddle. How someone who bleeds for this football club, all right, when he's on uh, TNT or whatever, BT, whatever it is now, some of his statements and some of his things can be. But, People like Glenn Hoddle, this is what this club should be doing. Glenn Hoddle, listen, Ellie, you and me were at an evening with Steve Perryman. Yeah. And he won't go he won't be at Tottenham. As much as we'd love him to, he um let's just say he's uh yeah, he won't he won't be uh coming into the Tottenham, he won't be coming into the Tottenham fold. Uh, um and, and also Brian, Glenn Hoddle at the uh, Ro- the Royal Pan- Banqueting Suite, I went and got the hat signed by I've got another hat with his signature. <laughs> Right. I'll give you. Right, and I sat by him, and he said the problem with he didn't use my name because he didn't know my name. Right, he said the problem mm-hmm. with Spurs, we've got wingers, and we don't use them as wingers. They're wing backs. Where are the old fashioned wingers gone? He said to me, where they just go and attack. They're not asked to I, defend. They just go. And I attack think that attack style, back. Ellie, went a long time ago. I, I know. think that style went and out said, a long time ago. From the wrong way. It's all a passing it's, game, and it's no, just wingers, no pure wingers exist anymore. They're wing backs, so they're Ellie, I met, defend and attack. I met, I met I met Hoddle at Hotspur Way um, just before COVID, and I, and I I was lucky enough to speak to him. And I said to him, "Would you change anything in the in the academy? Would you do anything different?" And he said to me, "No child should be thinking about winning." Um, about how many goals they score, um, about being in the best team. Just put a ball at their feet and teach them how to control the ball. Just teach them how to control a football. Because if you've got a player that can doesn't lose possession of the ball, good first touch, good second touch, just knows how to command that ball, teaching them everything else is a piece of cake. But instead, it's pass, 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 yeah. pass. So now, when you want someone to dribble, go past three, four players. That's just that's just change of direction and ball control. It's not being drummed into kids. Ellie's a hundred percent right on this. Thank you. It, it is true. It's just where football adapts yeah. over time, isn't it? <laughs> but the way I see it, I mean, what we spoke about earlier before, like I even came online, I was speaking to Charlie and Ellie, and for me. Just football as a whole, I think, has gone downhill. But that makes me sad. I'll tell you that. I personally think the best players I've ever seen in my lifetime was, let's say, between, what, 95 and 2010, 2015, over those 20 years sort of thing. Cheers, mate. I mean, you look at some of the players that were out then and what they could do and what they were capable of. And players that we call world-class now, wouldn't even be good enough to touch their boots. When, it's like when people say to me, Son is a world-class player. No, Son is brilliant. No two ways about it. And he is a world-class finisher. I'll give him that. But are you telling me that Son even comes, when he played on the wing, on the same boots of Figo, Raul, Ronaldinho, Del Piero, and the list can go on and on and on. For me, he doesn't even come within a million miles of those players. But world class now, where the standards of football has got that much lower, we're now labelling players as world class. Whereas if you go back 15 years, half of them would be lucky if they even got in the team. What do you reckon? Yeah, I'll go back a little bit further than that as well, because that's my Mm. era. In the late 70s, early 80s, the footballers were sublime. Everywhere, not just not just this country, 
other countries had fantastic footballers like Johan Cruyff. What a player! These footballers and that, they what be a able defender. to lace his boots. At, he was a stunningly talented, gifted player. And Glenn Hoddle, again, I like, I like to bring him up quite often, right? He told me that Johan Cruyff, right, there was, there was noises about Glenn Hoddle, right? And Johan Cruyff said, who is this Glenn Hoddle? Because he didn't know about him, right? And I, I got to ask him a question about it. I said, Glenn, right, this was at the Law Royals uh, banqueting suite. Iggy was there, he heard me, right? I said to Glenn, before the match, Johan Cruyff was saying, who is this Glenn Hoddle? And after the match, he goes, ah, oh, yeah. That's, that's the biggest compliment Glenn Hoddle got in his whole footballing career, for Johan Cruyff to acknowledge him and say what a fabulous footballer he was. OK. Right, question. I'll go for you, Charlie. You've been a bit quiet at the moment. With what I've said and what others have said here, yeah, you're obviously of a total different generation to any of us, yeah? And that's why I like you on here. I mean, we have older people on here who have their very set ways. Adrian, how you doing, mate, if ever you're watching? Then you have people our age watching it. But you've also got a good football brain, without a doubt. That's why I'm more than happy to have you on my show. And that's why Stel, Brian and anyone else, Ellie and anyone else is as well. And I think you'll do very good when... when you start your own show, not if, when you should start your own show. But what do you look at as the players now? What do you call a world-class player now, sort of thing? Well, I feel like now it's a big, it's a massive change because a long time ago, the football that was played was so much different. There was more individual brilliances that would change the game and now people are more looking at team performances. So that's a massive difference, I feel like. So now a world-class player, there is not really a lot of world-class players now because they're more building a team performance instead of a an individual performance so you've got world-class teams you've got world-class this but if you think of it maybe Har you could call Haaland a world-class player for scoring all these goals but he it's, if you compare him to the old players he doesn't really do it all he just scores goals um I think world-class is a, is a is a title that's really hard to achieve at this moment because how you play is not the way you want to become world-class because now it's more of a team performance of an individual as I just said so I think world-class is easier now to be classed as. But if you compare it to if you compare it to twenty years back, it isn't. That's what I'm trying to say. Because how we're playing now is especially team performance, and how you played then it was more. Can you what can you do with the ball? How skillful are you? How this and now you're the, the ten is like basically no team anymore. There's no, there's no more ten, so there's not really a lot of creators. The, the way the game's being played is so much different to then. So to say. But to be a world class player compared to then and now, I feel like to be then, if you were just amazing at the game, you would become a world, you'd be called a world class player easier. Sounds, I know it's a bit of a weird shout. So, Charlie, Charlie. You're saying the individuality has <laughs> gone from the game. I, I think it is a bit. Yeah. Mate, it, I love, I love how Charlie's 16 and he's saying, Well, back then, Charlie, you're a legend, you're an absolute legend. He, 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 you know what? I, I can't believe you're 16, man. How do you 16? It's like talking to an adult. Boy. You, you, you know, know, that's what I'm saying. We've got more so that's why we like you. Some fifty year old. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, you it's got you got to remember now. When it comes to world class as well, we'd oh, never been in an era where it had been dominated like it has been for the last fifteen odd years by two players. They have you, said. Well, they so, weren't just world class. They was. That's what I'm saying. But now, planet, you got to remember before them and taking over, the, there was more of a level playing field. There was more of a level playing field to kind of identify, yeah, you're world class, yeah, you're this, yeah, yeah. These two have taken the stats and numbers so ridiculously high that them two, you, look, world class is the highest high. They are a level above. If, we, if we're going to make this level above, but yeah. what being called world class is the highest thing you can get done, or the highest accolade you can be acclaimed in football by supporters, commentators, whatever. When you've got them two setting numbers and winning tournaments and doing things that they do season after season, breaking records, defining logic, everything. It's very, very hard to say, well, how can you put them in the same bracket? It's very, very hard to say, right, these two are world-class. Do you say these other players go in that bracket for, for whatever? It, once they've gone, like the transfer market exploded out of all control. And now it's, I think once them two go, 
calling people world class will, will, will kind of even itself out because it is very, very hard to put people in the same bucket as them. Very, very, very hard. Um, yeah. But we, we should see, listen, it, back then, I remember I remember when me and Stel were growing up at school and we'd speak about world class. It was a much more level playing field. We could easily have a discussion and talk about it. Like Put it this way, back in the day, I'm obsessed. My favourite Premier League striker, non-Tottenham, to ever play the game in the Premier League would be Thierry Henry. Not favourite, I think yeah. he's the best. I think he's the best foreign player to ever play in the Premier League by a country mile. Agreed. Um, and then my favourite, like English striker, and I, th I, if, back in their heyday, I'd even put this guy over Shearer, such as my love for this guy. I was obsessed with Robbie Fowler. Obsessed with yeah, Robbie Fowler. He fell to pieces though, didn't he? I, I apps for his first stint at Liverpool. My God, this guy was untouchable. This guy was incredible, and I would have put him back then as a striker. I'd have said this guy is world class because he was absolutely I mean, formidable. I mean, for me, I mean, we're just talking about football as a whole now, yeah. For me, I would say, I mean, this is personal opinion in this one, and call it a bit of favouritism here as well. I still think the most underrated, even though he was rated as quality but hardly ever gets spoken about whatever. Not just Premier League, I mean world-class striker. Batis Tutor. Oh, yeah. Oh. Whoa. That man could have gone anywhere, and he had the option. I mean, how many times did Manu try and get him? I think it was about three times Fergie tried him. And the rest, mate, and the rest of the world. And he just, yeah. he just did not want to leave Fiorentina until he'd done his time there and then went to Roma, if I remember correct, wasn't it? Yeah. Now, like what you just said about with Henri, for me, Batistuta these days, I don't even see a striker that can even come close to him. And he doesn't even get spoken about. This is what I mean by players as a whole now. I think the playing level has actually gone down that significantly low that it's a lot easier now to get called world-class than anything. I get what people are saying. I mean, if you were to put Messi and Ronaldo back in the day in the days we're talking about, when you also had Carespo around, when Shevchenko was at his best and you had Rao out there and everything, they'd still look world-class and phenomenal players, but they wouldn't look as... How do I put this? They wouldn't stand miles above everybody else. There'd be a significant level above everyone else, but they wouldn't be miles above everybody else like they have been because there was so much quality about back then. They would have probably still been the best, Dan, I'll but just not add by a me. million miles. Dan, I'll just add something very quickly to that. What, what I will say as well, and I'll stand by this and die on this hill, back in the days, again, when me and Stel were growing up, and I use me and Stel a lot because we are in the same year at school and everything got exactly the same age, back then and before, like the 80s and 70s, Players went to the club for the trophies, not the money. Back in the yes. 80s, if Tottenham and Liverpool went in for the same player and offered the same money, you're going to Liverpool. You were going to Liverpool. Whether and you got to remember, back then, you could only make two subs. Even if you are on the bench, you were going to Liverpool mm. because you wanted to be decorated with trophies and you yeah. wanted to play as the best. Yeah. Now, if it happens and you offer more money, I would say nine times out of ten, the players are going... Whether and then listen, the world has changed and finances have taken over a lot of stuff. And then listen, the, the money that's being offered is ridiculous. But back then, you went to a club in the 70s, 80s, 90s, you went to a club for the glory, not for the money. And that's why you saw these players playing with each other and have the greatest teams and the best players. Like a lot of people are saying, the greatest player I've ever seen for entertainment, for entertainment, Ronaldinho by a country mile. That guy was a magician. But an absolute... Juan Albino was even admitted by Messi as the man who actually taught him how to play real yep. football. He even blatantly said it himself, Messi, that Juan Albino was the one who actually took him up a level or two. And we talk... I mean, other midfielders I can think of... Like, two midfielders you know, I can name um, for the Premier League. Giggs and Skulls are two that I think never get mentioned either. Um, Fantastic footballers, but they don't get no credit these days. They don't even get. Dan, his passing was on flipping brilliant, and he had good vision as well. But his passing was so accurate. It's Thirty yards, forty yards, twenty yards, always hit its mark, more more or less. And then Giggs, better than anybody now. Player player, 
flair player, but with work ethic, Giggsy. He put in a shift, right? He had all the minerals, but he worked like a Trojan. Fantastic footballer. Close control you know, as well. Brilliant. Do, do you know, that my, my issue with world class is, I think there's a bias towards it, right? So normally you've got to be at the best clubs in order to be even in the conversation because the best clubs win the trophies, right? So you do get players that aren't at the best clubs who are outstanding. They'll never be called world-class, but they they were, they were sensational football players, but they didn't really win anything because they weren't at a big club. I'll give you an example. So Brian said Thierry Henry was his favourite foreign Dane. player. Right? Oh, well, he's a Bayern, so technically he's a big club. Well, he's a big club. <laughs> massive club. But um, yeah, at Spurs, yeah, it's fucking useless. Club. But um, <laughs> like for me, my my favourite ever foreign player in the Premier League. Whether you whether you agree or not, he's one of the greatest dribblers we've ever seen. Like he, he's he's regarded in the top three best. JJ Kocha, man. JJ Kocha, he's one of the greatest player. dribblers oh. we've ever seen. Right. Hey, that, him and Jokaev together at Bolton were, were unbelievable. But JJ Okocha and you know, the green dude that... still. What was the green dude they had? Stelios. No, being serious, he was incredible. Stelios, yeah, his name was Stelios. No, but what well, Giannakopoulos or saying, wasn't it? Stelios, Stelios Giannakopoulos, yeah, because he won the Euros for Greece in 2004. Yeah. Right. Totti, he... yes, another they... man, oh. top player. Sorry, go on. Totti, well, Adriano, Adriano, another one, just because he only had a the... short career, he was an unbelievable player. But do you class JJ Kotra as world class? The world will say no because what did he win? But if he if he played at a Liverpool, if he played at a City, if he played at an AC Milan, he would have been classed the goat. He would what have been called the goat. As well, still that yeah. JJ was class. He, 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 he chips it up. He chips it up a little bit, about three or four yards, and he went bang. Right into the top corner. It was bloody world class goal. Watching watching him um, against the filth was incredible. He destroyed the filth every single year. Different level. <laughs> different level. Look, I mean, someone's even put Matt, other Matt players. Matt Latissier was an Matt unbelievable dribbler. Mate, if, we'd signed dribbler. Him, if he'd actually signed for us, and he said as well, like he came very very close to joining us, like everything was agreed. He was about to 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 get the the train or whatever down to Tottenham, and then he had a change of heart. Yeah, oh, mate. If we had had Matt Latis, oh no, oh, mate. I mean, but the thing is, Manu wanted him, Spurs so. wanted him. Yeah, but he said Spurs oh. was. Yeah, he personally said Dan, the only one that was I was on the verge of doing and ever considered was Tottenham Hotspur from his own yeah. from his own lips. Yeah, because he mm. was a big Spurs supporter. But another good player of that era. Yeah, but we Frank didn't we didn't want him because um we, we wanted to player. sign um. Andy Sinton instead. Andy Sinton. No, no, no. He, yeah, no, no, he was coming. It was him that it was him that pulled out. It was Matt Latisha I mean, that pulled out, not us. With the question yeah. I've just got asked here at Danny, where would you rate oh, George Ware? Now, George Ware for yeah. me, he was extremely good, but you only really saw a couple of years out of him. He he didn't stay up to his quality, did he? I JJ mean, mate, was he was better. very good at he was JJ very good was at AC better. Milan, but he JJ. I mean, for me, if I'm just going to go by an out and out attacking midfield playmaker, strike all in one sort of thing, I don't think there's many out there that could touch Raul. Maradona? Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you now, one of my favourite players of all time, Roberto Baggio. Roberto Baggio was on, oh, was on another level. Player. Yep. He was on another, another level. One. Roberto Baggio was fucking genius. No, no, nobody's mentioned Paul Gascoigne yet. Mate, Paul Gascoigne. Gascoigne. G oh Gaza, listen, God. don't get me started because this will become Gaza. a seven hour oh, no, stream. He, he's your sweet spot. But my sweet Gascoigne. spot, my weak spot, my oh. whatever you want to call it. <laughs> my, my, oh, uh, my poor Gascoigne. Kaka, yeah. Kaka was a top Gascoigne player. Was, I think he was a step up from even Daddy Janola. I know that might That's be controversial. Night and day. Night and day. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I know that because a lot of people think Daddy Janola's better than Gaza, but I don't <laughs> agree. No. Gaza. What he scored Who against that? Arsenal with his debut with no boots. <laughs> no, if listen, it's... you can't. You can't. If Paul Gascoigne, I, I still think if Paul Gascoigne hadn't had his demons or whatever had happened, yeah, and we hadn't been in the financial crisis we were and had to sell him, and he hadn't been a, a nutcase like he was in the FA Cup final, if we had had him 
for his entire career. And he had just obviously picked up injuries, whatever, but didn't have that outside interference. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We were we would be talking. We listen, he'd be a lot of people will say Glenn Hoddle is the best player to play for Spurs. I only saw the tail end. I, I go, listen, that's the majority and I can't affect that. But for me, from when I've stood, no one will ever replace Gaza for me. I don't care who we sign in the future. Yeah. I don't care if Alfie Devine, my, my boy I've been talking about, turns out <laughs> won't lace Gaza's boots. That man, for the time we had him, and a Euro 96 for England, yeah. and what, mate, yeah. this man was... Just, I mean, that's what I'm saying. There is so many players you can go through here. And the reason I'm doing this and talking about all, yeah. like we're naming the best players that we've heard of, is because now I think it starts to show to maybe some people that football generation these days has gone so downhill. Because at one stage you had a load of these players. I mean, another one that no one ever talks about, when Chica Hadji. I was I mean, just oh about to oh because... I was about to say it to me because what a player. Yeah. What a player. Pavel Nedved. And you go for, and a lot of these players that we've mentioned, yeah, different generations, but a lot that we've actually mentioned were all about at the same time. Are you telling me, are you telling me that Hyung Min Son goes into the category of any of them? It's a different era. It's a different era. That's that's what I'm saying. But if you were to put him back then, that is why I can't call Son world class. Yeah. He might be at world class at finishing what he does, but players we've named there, modern day players, they ain't even good enough to lick their boots, basically, as far as oh, I'm no. concerned. And that and is where I'm got... agreeing. What Stell said earlier, and that football has changed, but it, it's gone downhill. We haven't really. even mentioned Pele yet. Pele, he scored more goals than Messi. You know what right, I mean? He, the didn't, list... he didn't leave Brazil, but he's won three World Cups. That's, I think that's I think feet in itself. You haven't even mentioned George Best. Maradona, we haven't mentioned Maradona. Franz Beckenbauer. Maradona's, Maradona's yeah. is the Beckenbauer, best. Maradona's the greatest. Van Basten was a, a brilliant player. striker. You, you, you know what? I, I have to say, Big Boss Man has mentioned Seedorf. I, I liken Seedorf to Edgar Davids. And for me, and not just to be played yeah. for Spurs, Edgar Davids yeah. was, was... I mean, when, when, when I think yeah. about the Dutch team, when I think, obviously, everyone thinks Cruyff, but the very first top football tour I remember watching, and I've got clear, clear memories of, was Euro 88, when Holland won it and Van Basten scored that incredible volley against Russia. You look, we talk about the spine, you look at the spine of those teams. They had Koeman, yeah. they had Hullet, Rijkaard, Van oh, Basten. Brilliant. That, and you saw that you saw the three of them, Hullet, Van Basten and Rijkaard, dominating the land. Those That's three, man. those three. We 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 talk about when we had Deckett, when we had a desk, when we had Delhi Erickson, Son and Kane. You want to talk about tr- trilogy, mate? C. Um, uh, Rijkaard, Hullet, and Van Basten. They were fucking formidable. They were untouchable, especially Rud Hullet. Rud Hullet as a footballer was something special. Was something very very special. Yeah. Um, they were but that. With that- a better front three than them. They weren't for their whole career, but a better front three than them. I don't think I've ever seen anyone that had touched the three R's. Ronaldo, Rivaldo and Ronaldinho. Alfredo I mean, Di Stefano. Don't forget I, him, yeah? Yeah, but Double. also you remember two of them were midfielders. Pushkas as well. Pushkas was a fabulous player. My dad was yep. telling me about him when I was a little girl. He used to go, Pushkas, Eli, Pushkas. I think, I, 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 I think the be- I think I think the best three strike force I've seen, uh, down to rival yours was MSN, was Messi, Suarez, Neymar for a couple of years. Mm, you could, yeah. you could not. They were I'm, absolutely unbelievable. Who was the front three when it was Messi, Samuel Eto'o? There was one more. Oh, yeah, Samuel Thierry Henry. Henry. Yeah. T- yeah, Thierry Henry for some yeah, of that. Yeah, it was all it was, was it was, it was it. when he went to Napoli and won him the league. Literally won him the league on his own. He's the Maradona. best player ever. Fantastic. Fantastic. I, I put Maradona. He's the best player ever. He's the best I ever. Know, I know they say Messi, but I like Maradona better <laughs> than Messi. Because he, Listen, he went to a shit old club in a shit old oh. town. They had nothing yeah. they, they had nothing going for them. He turned them into league title winners, European winners, cup winners. He what he did for that Maradona, club is brilliant. the impact is like no other 
player has done for any club. I know. It's Guys, that's how I know it's the 1950s. I know, and he won the World Alfredo, Cup. Alfredo Di Stefano. He won two Ballon d'Ors, won eight league championships. He was very good. If we talk about class... Charlie, are you, class. Go- are you Googling? He is blatantly. He is blatantly. No, I... <laughs> 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 guys, listen. <laughs> I'll tell you this. No, I played FIFA. Google you know, you're you fucking Charlie no, sitting there. Yeah, Nobby, Nobby Smith in 1932, right? What? No, listen, listen. I played FIFA in my days. And right. A lot of the things went about the things, and they wanted yeah. the, this yeah. to be an icon. That's why I know about him, some... just because of FIFA. I tell you but... who else was a really good That's true. Striker. He was on FIFA, Ken, you're right. You're Kenny right, Dalglish at Liverpool. Oh, mate, 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 mate. All right. Let me Kenny stop this here. Let me stop Fantastic. this here. Let me stop this here a sec. Right, let's stop John here Marks. a second. <laughs> everybody <laughs> take everybody take a breath. Yeah, right. Right. Seeing as there's not much to talk about about Spurs, yeah. Let's just <laughs> talk about something positive in football. Yeah, but I want to talk about something a bit positive. Just something a bit different. Just so negative. Right. Negative. Let's put because we're toxic still, aren't we? So <laughs> so let's be Poison. positive. Poison. Let's put a team together then, yeah. But the difference is when I put a team together, I try and put a team together that would actually work. Because it's all good saying certain players was the best player ever in that position, like, say, Bobby Charlton or stuff like that. But would they have worked with other players? It's different generations. We don't know. Yeah. But let's put a team together then, as soon as we're talking it. All right. And what formation do we go for? Go what for formation it. do we agree on? Come on, you three. What formation do we agree on between all of us? Just, I'd, just... I'd like to go old-fashioned four four two. I was about to say that as well. Yeah. <clears throat> Charlie? 4-4-2? Four, 4-4-2. Four, two. Four, four, two. Yeah, it's going to be the okay. easiest way to So, we'll go with goalkeeper. I mean, we're, all okay. getting, we're, we're never all going to agree on this, yeah? Because everyone has got different opinions in different ways, yeah? <laughs> I'm yeah. talking about all round. Forget Spurs. I want to talk about good players. So, <laughs> so when it comes down to it, <laughs> for me, my favourite goalkeeper is a very, very strong one. I still think Manuel Neuer is one of the best goalkeepers the planet has ever seen. But for me, it comes down to two. It's either Buffon or Oliver Kahn for me. Mate, so I'm gonna go no with... Peter Schmeichel. No Peter Schmeichel. <laughs> I think he was great, but I think them two were that's better. I, I, I personally... That's what I'm one saying. On one-on-one, on one, he was the best. One-on-one on one with Possibly, a striker. But Just... I'd have rather had Oliver Kahn, personally. I think Oliver Kahn was probably the most solid, old yeah. school, stand on your line keeper ever. Modern day, no, because he don't play sweeper keeper in that. But for me, it's either Buffon or Kahn. I'm going to go with Kahn as my goalkeeper. Go on then, Ellie. Okay, right. So, are we allowed to choose Spurs players, by the way? Choose, choose whoever you want, mate. Right. I couldn't care less. The, it's football. In my football opinion, football. the most talented goalkeeper. Espen Barton. I'm going to choose two, right? Because Aurelio they're on the Gomez. level. You're playing we've all come to an Jennings. agreement here. Pat Jennings was absolutely stunning goalkeeper. He could catch the ball with one hand from the air. That's how brilliant. I've never seen another goalie do it. Never. Right? And he used to put a line in the middle, middle of the goal so he knew where he was. So not, not many people beat him. Right, and he was a stunning goalkeeper. But I think the, my favourite was Peter Schmeichel. <laughs> right, because I tell you what, because my favourite like, Spurs goalkeeper, he was like he was like a yeah, brick but... house in the goal. You couldn't beat him. Like if the goal, you, the, the, the attacker's coming right, and you think you ain't got no chance. Michael's gonna snuff it out, right? And invariably he did. And Man United in that period were fabulous, but he made them win the titles because he saved so many shots, unbelievable saves, that no, I've never seen any other goalie make them. And I've seen right. a lot of football. So I've your first choice goalkeeper, <laughs> I'm, I'm going to step back because the more people mention it, I think I'm going to have to go with Buffon. Out I'm going to have to say 100%, Buffon. 100%. So I've, gone Buff- I've gone Buffon, you're going for Pat Jennings. I could, yeah, Pat, totally Pat Jennings, that. just for sheer goalkeeping right. excellence. Charlie, I know this one might, fabulous. I might. I know this might be a little bit more difficult for you because you're younger and necess- 
He's the one calling out Stefano. Thing. It's going to be a piece of history. I'm, I'm just not saying. I'm, not, I'm off trying to defend the boy here. I'm trying to. I'm, I'm trying to help I'm him not out. Judy, yeah. I'd say I'm going. I'm going down my roots. I'd say my Dutch roots. I'd say Edwin van der Sar. He is an amazing goalkeeper. Was, and as okay, or Buffon, because if you look at the games he did for Juventus, how he played for them, how he kept those clean sheets, how he did all this stuff for them, it's just crazy how he actually did that. And same with Manuel Neuer, but I'd go for Buffon or van der Sar. Peter Cech too, but I don't like Arsenal, don't like Chelsea, so don't care about him. No, but um, I think I'd, I'd go for Buffon in the end because what he's done for Juventus, all all the saves he's made, it's just it's crazy. The Italian okay, league so too. The Italian league used to be the best of the best, yeah, and it's had the best of the best as far as I'm concerned. But that's personal opinion. So we got what one Pat Jennings and we got two Buffon, Brian. Yeah, mate. Listen, I, 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 I. Buffon for me night and day. I even remember back in the day, late 90s, playing championship manager religiously. Whenever I started a new career, the first person I always, always bought, regardless, was Buffon. Buffon has done the lock, retired, come back. Buffon is the elite of the elite and goalkeepers for me. I There may be some that surpass him shortly, and the, the people mentioned have been of a very, very high standard, but if I had to pick a World Eleven, and it was to go out and play a team in their prime, and they're all in their prime, sorry, it's not even a debate for me at who's in who's in goal. It's it's Gian Luigi Buffon. Okay, still your opinion. So I've done a Google search. I've done a Charlie, right? <laughs> Cheat. No, sometimes uh, yeah. you do have to do it here because you say a player and you just forget a player, and then you see that player and you're like. Still, yeah. you're going to get done for breaking uh, uh, fair play, uh, fair play world eleven records. You're going to get a ten point deduction. Right, I want to, I want to read you something. Okay, without a shadow of a doubt, the greatest goalkeeper in the history of the game, the greatest ever, one of football's truly legendary names. He's the only goalkeeper to ever win a Ballon d'Or. I've never heard of him. Soviet goalkeeper Lev Yashin. Is I officially the greatest yeah. goalkeeper ever. I don't know who he is. Apparently, he's, he's the goat. Still. Uh, guys, to be honest, every FIFA player knows him because he's like the best goalkeeper you can have on FIFA. So, I think that's more of a if you play video games, you know him. If you don't play video games, you don't because he's just a, he's a very he was a very good keeper. What he did for like those teams because Soviet Union, you couldn't play in Germany, you couldn't play in the West Side because you could only play in the Soviet Union to get out of there. Was very hard. Oh, he won. He won yeah. Olympic gold. And European yeah. Championship gold as well. So it wasn't just in Russia. He's, he, and he's a Ballon d'Or. He, he is regarded as the greatest ever. Well, 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 when was but your opinion, time? who is your favourite goalkeeper of all time? Forget Lev stats, Yashin. forget everything. Lev Yashin. <laughs> okay. Right. Still, so the people... Still Googling, still Googling every position. Eva, Eva no, no, just, <laughs> just, just, just to go on, because I, I wanted to see where Schmeichel was, right? And Schmeichel hmm. actually came eighth on the list, although I disagree with where's some Where's Pat Jennings? Where's, where's Buffon? Buffon was number three behind Casillas. Rip. Casillas okay. was Rip. good. Casillas was good. But no. was the good. one thing we're going to have to agree here there is free to the rest. So Buffon is the number one keeper for our team. Boo. Yeah. <laughs> Either way. So Boo. we're starting right back now, yeah? I'm going to go first yeah. with this one. I'm keeping I'm my hands up, guys. I'm not Googling. <laughs> no, no, you can Google. Yeah? You're, you're on mute and going, hey, Siri. Because well, sometimes got, you've, got Stephen to see, Stephen you've got to see the player. To Sometimes you just forget about a player. Stephen but for me, Cole. I know I'm going to get a lot of controversy on this one. If I was to pick someone for this team, for my team, that would work as my right back, Philip Lahm. Yeah, mustard. That's my, Didn't that's he play left? Choice. I'm sure he played left. He played on the right as well. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. See, I see what you're doing there. Yeah. It, it was more of a left back, though. If we're going to be honest yeah. about it, Danny. Yeah. It was well, it's, it's, it's his team. He can. He can change, mate. He can he change. He played the midfield too. He played everywhere. That's what I mean. But a majority of yeah, time, yeah. Stick him right he, back. He's the thing the is, team. I can't. I can't stick him as the left back. I can't do it because I know who my left back is, and I know Philip Lahm. He has played right back enough times when he did play for Munich, but I know what his main position was, but. I, there's gonna the left back. I don't think any of us are gonna even debate. But for me, Philip Lahm, I'd stick him as my right back because I know he can hack it there, and I just think he was an excellent player. Ellie, um, I'm gonna put Carl Walker. 
Not your worst call. Go on. I, I'm, I I'm think, interested I now. He's a bril- I think he's a brilliant footballer all round. He's good at passing. Brilliant. He's like Mickey van der Ven, but years on. You know what I mean? He's got years of experience because he's pace. He relies on his pace, but he is pr- a pretty good defender as well. And I think he would suit the team that I've got with Pat Jennings and Carl Walker. I'm a bit biased as well because he's played for Tottenham. But look what he's done mm-hmm. at Man City. He's gone to Man City and he's rocked the boat. And he's like gone in there and he's won absolutely everything. Yeah, so I'm going to put Carl Walker. I love him. Mm-hmm. Okay. Do you know what? I really don't think that is a bad call because I would say he has been an all-time right back. So yeah. I'll drop down one this time. Brian, you're right yes. back. Uh, Carl Walker is a great, great shout. Um, very good shout. I, I'm going to go for Macon. <laughs> joking, joking, joking. Um, I, I'm not. <laughs> I, 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 I am going for his Brazilian counterpart in Cafu. Oh, yes. Now you're talking. I'm doing the same thing. Right? Yeah. I, I just don't think. I know who my left back is immediately. So uh, it's, yeah. it's definitely uh, it's, it's, it's Cafu for me. <laughs> yeah. With that one, I, I, I can agree with that. Still? There was one game where Tony Cascarino played at right back, right? And I'm not joking. That name, Tony Cascarino. <laughs> no, no, listen. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> ca- 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 we doing right back. Right back, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah ca- 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 it's a no brainer for me, Cafu. yeah. It is, isn't it? I'm going for so, so you're going for Cafu as well. So, Cafu, I, I, I can go with that because, as far as I'm concerned, he was one of the best, he was part of the best back four I have ever personally seen. They might not have been the best each in that position, but as a technical back four, that AC Milan back four was shockingly good. So, instead of going center, I'm going to go straight to to the left back and again I'll start with this one and then the others I'll be quiet I'd quite happy put him in the middle but Paulo Maldini without a doubt without a doubt the only, the only one I think that rivals him and I hate to fucking hate this name is Ashley Cole that is the yeah. only one to me in world football Ashley that Cole anywhere, was brilliant that comes, yeah. anywhere near, that comes anywhere near him but he's still 100 miles away from Maldini but he still he still don't even lick his boots mate. Yeah. Yeah. oh wait a minute Wait a minute, the Stoke on Trent has just definitely put one in the mix in Roberto Carlos. Yeah, that's what I was going to say, yeah. Roberto Carlos. He's, this, that, that, that's a debate. That is a debate. Oh, no, 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 no. Roberto Carlos was one of the best wing backs. If we're well, going we play 4 2, we, we need. Nothing. Well, if we're playing 4 4 2, old school, yeah. you need left back and right back. Roberto yeah. Carlos, I can get it, but no one can tell me Maldini. Yeah, yeah you're Carlos right. Actually, was a better Maldini. defender. Oh. The Maldini. I, I misunderstood but, this then. I thought I thought we were doing if Ange Postacoglu was manager, we'd have to great, set the greatest team and how we're playing. No, That's, we're just picking up our uh, favourite team oh, of all time. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Then it I, doesn't even I, have I to be the best player there, but the player you would want there. I mean, I've said Maldini left, Brian Maldini left, uh, Roberto, Roberto Carlos. It, it comes in the talk, doesn't it? Yep. Yeah. Oh, Good still. Was... Yeah, Maldini. All day long. Pardon and Charlie? Name. I'll have to go for Maldini too then. It, it is Maldini. I mean, that just goes without saying. I know there's I know there's ones who can challenge it, but Paolo Maldini... You, You've you just, left me I out, though. You haven't asked me. I'm coming to you, oh, Ellie, it's but it's still Paolo better. Maldini. <laughs> Maldini's so... still going to be there. But go on, your opinion. Yeah. Well, there's only one player, Maldini. You can't go against him because he was world. He was better. He's universal class, <laughs> like out of this world class defender. And he said, he said in one interview, "If I have to tackle, then I'm not doing my job." Yes, he did. Yeah, that's how yes, classy he did. is. What a player! So that's so that's Maldini there. Yeah. Okay, I'll come to you first on this one, then, Ellie. Yeah, your first defender doesn't. I don't care if they're left footed, right footed, whatever, what position, like just centre back. Your first one, whether they go left or right, I couldn't care less. 
<laughs> I'm going to be biased again. I know I might have my Tottenham hat, but I'd put Ledley King. Ooh, Fantastic okay. footballer. Yeah, and he read, the, but... he read the game so well. He would be perfect with Maldini because they're two players that read the book, read the game so well. And if he didn't have those that dodgy knee, he he would have achieved so much. He would have been at prime Real Madrid. That boy, mm -hmm. he would have because he was I so mean, classy. I know a lot of people are going to say, "Yeah, we're only looking at players in the nineties, whatever else." But it's personal opinion who you rate basically yeah like yeah. i say i'm not going by facts on who's won what and this and that i don't care i'm no. putting a team together that we would if want. they've won the ballon d'or so you so you just said ledley king would be one of your defenders yeah yeah 100 okay fair enough charlie i'm still i'm still thinking just just give me a couple of seconds i'm still, you're still in other words you're still you're still reading no, I'll, I'll, I'll you, keep, you I'll got a slow in up. you got a slow in there up, yeah yeah I've got slow virgin. Virgin. they're much better <laughs> well go on still give us your defender then um, I'm going to be like Ellie. I'm also going to be biased. Um, Anthony Gardner. <laughs> <laughs> Anthony Gardner. No, sorry, oh, no, no. That's the bench. That's the bench. Um, yeah, um, I'm going to... The, the best ever centre-back in the game. It's got to be Franz Beckham. Matthias Beckenbauer. Sammer. Oh, I've got a good one. Franz Beckenbauer. Oh, so that's a great yeah, shout. That's a great Beckenbauer. shout. Beckenbauer. He's the best defender ever, man. Okay, Brian. Just like still, I'm gonna go old school, and you look at it. I, I, I can't look by it because obviously we were too young to hit see him, but so many people wax lyrical about him, including the great Pele, the only man to lift the World Cup for England, Bobby Moore. Has to, mm -hmm. has to, bit has to be in there. You just need to listen to what people say about this man. Um, and the only man to lift the World Cup for us, I think Bobby Bobby Moore, even Beckenbauer would talk about him. Bobby Moore for me, hands down, goes him. Okay. I, I'd say I'd say Black Carlos Puel. You know, Carlos, Carlos from Barcelona. He was he was a block in defence for Barcelona. He he kept the whole team level headed. He was that captain you needed to have to win games for you. I think Carlos Puel was a he was a monster at the back. I, I'm saying Carlos Puel for that. Okay, so Ellie, you've said who? Ledley King. Ledley King. Charlie? Carl's Pool. Still? Franz Beckenbauer. Brian? Probably more. But this one's down on me, really. Yeah. Still wins this one. Franz Beckenbauer. Yeah. Got two yeah, yeah. Who's his partner? Yeah, you might as well just pick the partner. You might as well be one of the up. other names. Yeah. yeah. Well... I know, okay, so I'll, I'll say on this one then. I know who I would personally want next to Franz Beckenbauer there, but I know where it's going to go. But I'm still going to say who I think personally It's one of two for me, the two of the greatest defenders ever, and they hardly ever get spoken about, but it's generations, whatever. For me, it's either Nesta or Lillian Turan, and I'm going to go Lillian Turan. What, Even though I know that one won't win. And Cannavaro and Baresi, Lillian Turan. I think I think Lillian Turan. I that. think Lillian Turan. I think he was. I think he's been probably the best defender out there. Personal opinion that I have seen play. I mean, I know there's stats better. Like I said, stats ain't coming into this one, yeah. Yeah. Oh, Dan. That's Dan's so annoyed. He's left his own show. <laughs> I'm, playing, I'm overriding him. I'm overriding him. And like Stel said, Bobby Moore's going in outside him. And guys, um, to be honest. Virgil Wayne van Dijk, I know he's a new there. player, I know he isn't the greatest, but Virgil van Dijk, would you give him a shout? No, no, no. Virgil no. van Dijk doesn't even touch Nesta, Beckenbauer. Wait, I mean, who else can you name? Yaksh, and Beresi, Dan, I, I, the two yeah, best I, ever Italian yeah, I have to say, Beresi, Beresi, I mean, was, I, I said Bobby Moore. But, but, yeah. I, I said Bobby Moore, but <laughs> as soon as we were doing defenders... The very first name that comes to my head immediately was Beresi. Beresi. Yeah. Beresi. No. Like I say, He's Lillian probably, Turan. Yeah. Me, no. Right. Decision made. For me, it's got to be Nesta. Nesta was better than Turan, even though I've just always rated Turan. For me, right. I'm going Nesta. Go on then. Whoever out of you for. I'm going to go Beresi. Very good call. Yeah. Charlie? Nesta. Okay. 
Brian? Are we only doing it out? Listen, I'm, I, I want to stick to Bobby Moore, but obviously he's going out. But if I have to choose, no, if I have to choose, going down the road of Nesta and Baresi, and for me, Baresi. Okay. And I love Nesta. I loved Nesta. But you're not putting him in the team. So. Not over Baresi. Not over Baresi. <laughs> no. You've you got to remember, Eddie, there's a the difference between there's a difference between loving a player. Yes. And who's I'll best for like sentimental. Yes. Yeah. I love Hoybier, but I know he's not. No, he's not. <laughs> Don't even try your shit with him. Yeah, when we were talking about Hoybier and uh, I don't even know that really. That's like saying Hoybier and Claude Makélélé. Yeah, do you know what I mean? He Just an answer for this level, one. Lillian Saram at Juventus, he played centre back most of the time, <laughs> but he did play right back for France a lot and others. But so I've said Nesta, you've said Nesta. Who did you say, Ellie? Berezi. Berezi, still? Callum Davenport. <laughs> Berezi. Seriously. Berezi. Oh, oh, so that's two all. Two all. <laughs> Brian, it's down to you, mate. Yeah, I said, listen, if we're talking Barazi and Nestor, I said Barazi all day long. Okay. Barazi all day long. Not even a debate. It's in. Come on. Barazi's playing with Ledley King. He's a lucky lad. So what (laughs) do we do? Do we start on the wings here or do we go for the middle? It's your team, Dan. Yeah. Well, no, it's not just my team. It's our team. I'm asking your opinion. You're the manager. Let's start on left wing then. Still. Um, probably Easy. Rule Fox. <laughs> I see the road still going down. <laughs> Jose Dominguez. Um, can you come back to me? I need to think about this. I, I can go straight away. I can go straight away. Gareth Bell. Okay, that's Ooh, a fair call. Uh, Charlie? Ronaldinho. He played on the left wing, he played a bit of central attack in midfield, but if he was on the left wing, I'd, I'd take him. But if you've got to get him in the team, it's on the left wing, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. That means I'd put him in the centre. Like the Ellie? Teddy Sheringham role. Well, then we'd have to change the formation from a 4-4-2. No, we played 4-4-2 with Teddy and Jürgen, and Teddy dropped deep. Can it... Then George Best. All right, so, okay. On, Ellie? Hang on, it's Ellie. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I know who I go for. I'm torn between Bell... I'm going to put Gareth Bell in. I've got to get a Spurs player okay. in. Yeah. Okay, then Brian. Gareth Bell. Oh, yeah, you said Gareth Bell, didn't you? So that's Bale, Bale, Ronaldinho. Very I'm exciting going to go Ronald- player, Bell. I'm going to go Ronaldinho as well. Because for me, any team has he's got to have to put him in the, the man who made Messi. We can put him in the centre. I was going to put him in the centre, but if you put we him don't, in the we don't have a centre player. We don't have a central attacking midfielder. That's what I mean with the striking. formation. <coughs> we can change we... the formation still. we got four at the back. We can change it to a 4-3-1-2. F- four, 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 two, four, four, two, so you can play a number 10. Tricky. But either way, okay. on the left for me, it goes Ronaldinho. I used to play 4-4-2 four, four, as a can. Yeah, I was gonna. Okay. I, I wouldn't play Ronaldinho on the left. I would. I would. I would. Um, I don't, don't know why I didn't even think about it. Cristiano Ronaldo, man. Good shot. Yeah. What on the left? On the left. Oh, the left wing. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry. Sorry. Nice. Sorry. Yeah. Um, he played number seven, didn't he? I mean, Giggs could get into that he easily. Won. Yeah, Giggs was he the best ever. Was he the best ever? Ronaldo can play across any right. He can play. He's more, he's, he's, he was more on the right, though, wasn't he? Yeah, he, yeah, he could play both sides. Right. Yeah, but Ronaldo was on the right and then turned yeah, into striker, basically. On the left, it's like one Aldinho. He plays. Do you know what? Like, Do you know what? Okay, 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 okay. All right, all right. I've got it. All right. Luis Figa. Oh, Ooh, yeah. Oh, my God. What he was on the player. right, wasn't he? Brilliant player. Yeah, he was on the right, too. I swear he played left for Portugal. He can, he can play either. Yeah, he he, can play for either. Real Madrid, he was mainly on the right. And do you know what the problem is there? That is another player. Oh, fuck me, then. My... Damien Duff. <laughs> <laughs> well, you've got to make your decision. All right. Well, okay, do you know what? Ryan Giggs. Ryan Giggs. Ryan Giggs. Ryan Giggs. Ryan Giggs. Okay, so <laughs> it's either Ronaldinho or. Actually, no, no, do you know what? No, no, hold on. Geeks won more than Bale, but Bale was different. Oh, they're different players, man. 
I know is. Yeah. If you want to you go old school, no, no, four, no. Four two. I'm gonna say no, no. I'm gonna say I'm gonna say Gareth Bale. Do you know why? Because in yes. big moments, especially in finals, he turned up. He yeah. did turn up. Yes. Like, yes, like the goal he scored against okay, Liverpool. What a brilliant goal. <laughs> right. Barcelona yeah. in the cup final for Madrid. Gareth Bale. Yeah, on, he did. On the right-hand side, my choice would have been Figo. Because, just call it biased, whatever. Figo was my man yeah. for the right. I know. Yeah. But Figo was my man. Charlie? I'm only with Figo, or I would like. Like, just get it. Will give you a minute for that. I haven't even thought about the right wing yet. Okay, Brian. Yeah, I listen. I people will disagree, but for me, for right back, just I, I think right David up. Beckham is so, yeah. so, 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 so under. Listen, the crossing and passing ability of this man, and dead balls. He was. If you needed something. Just look at the moment. Stell speaks about big goals and big right, moments. Just, just, just look at Gareth Bale against Greece. Just over oh, Gareth Bale, sorry, David Beckham. I've never. I used to love. I, I sometimes love seeing a great assist more than the actual goal itself. And the catalogue of things that David Beckham could do, and the I, I, I think David Beckham was an exceptional talent. You, you look at people like you've been saying Figo and everything that had the skills and tricks and took people on. I, I, I just can't... Beckham I'm, at putting that ball in there. Beck, Beck, Beckham putting that ball in there. Beckham at uh, uh, that moment when you need a set piece. I, I think Bex was as, as high as he got. I, I just... He's one of the best footballers I enjoyed watching. He was for, for his past... David Beckham for me. He may be controversial, mm-hmm. especially when you look at Ronaldo well, or something like that, but I, I that, love David Beckham. That is the whole point of what I'm saying with this. There is going to be no way you can win it because you think Ronaldo's got to be in there. But I'm just saying what you think is your favourite player. Not necessarily, it doesn't have to be the best player, but favourite oh, player. Made it easier. Now you've made it easier. David Beckham for sure. You know, because otherwise we've got to get Messi in there, we've got to get whoever else in there, and you're just never going to do it. But I'm just saying yeah. this through favourite players. So, Stel, who would you have on the right? So, it's Beckham. Oh, Cristiano Ronaldo. Ronaldo. Ellie? You know what? If it's my favourite... I'll say overall Ronaldo's better, but I liked Luis Figo. I think Mm -hmm. he was a fabulous technician. It was like the ball was part of his body. When he receives (laughs) it, he's got that similar like all the best players right they can they've got a deft touch you know like mm-hmm. they can pull it out of the sky they can when they can control it and then they're off and he had it I, Lewis Figo, Do you know what i'm gonna add a quick rule here that i should have done at the start no ronaldo or messi allowed there you go oh, there's a big problem out of it me. no that's a big problem out the way now if you believe it or not that's a big yeah, problem Lewis out the way Figo, i agree i concur with you Dan, he was a fabulous footballer. Okay. He was so better than Cantona, and that's a that's a compliment. So that's Beckham, Figo, Figo. Charlie? I was going for Messi, but now I've got to choose another one. Uh, Best get on that Google. Yeah, exactly. Get, get out of the Google. No, <laughs> I've got a couple of players in mind, but I don't know who to... I'll just go for Figo because... I think I would go for Messi, but you say there's no Messi. I just just no, no. Be, like... because it may, it makes it easier for everyone not having Ronaldo and uh, Messi in yeah. there because one way or another you've got to squeeze them two in there. So without yeah. them in there, and yeah. still, who would have been your choice for for the right hand side? Cristiano Ronaldo. I'll still wait a minute. You haven't given your funny one. Give me a funny one. No, there's no oh, Ronaldo okay. or Messi um, allowed. Not allowed Ronaldo Andy Reid. Andy Reid. Andy Reid. Andy Reid. <laughs> right. I've not still yes. a local team put together. So, go on. No Messi or Ronaldo is allowed. I put I put together a relegation side. So really... <laughs> Very good one at that. So, come on. No Messi or Ronaldo allowed. We're going to play Luton all. next year. Um, <laughs> do you know what? There's one player who I thought was just brilliant, man. Brilliant. I loved him, but I hated him because he was played for the scum. But I think I am Robin. Oh, that's a good awesome. shout. That's a very good shout, still. Oh, very tricky it. player, man. Oh, oh. quality man. He dribbled. Quality, he he yeah. always used to bend his foot dribbled. back when he dribbled. It was like unusual oh. stuff. What was that? He, he, <laughs> what? He, had, he had a bit of a bent body. 
<laughs> I don't know. I didn't look at him like that. He kind of ran like that. He kind of ran like that. He's a bit bent. <laughs> yeah. He and he so always looked these... about 45 when he was 25, didn't he? Yeah. <laughs> he did it for Chelsea. He did it for country. He did it for Bayern yeah. Munich. Guy was quality, man. <laughs> okay, yeah. but Figo wins this one on the right-hand side. So now we go to our centre mid. Still, I'll start with you straight away. Your first centre mid. Right, centre Dan, mid. I have... I have <clears throat> right, I need, I need to break a rule here. I need to give you both my centre mids. There's a reason. Good idea. I can't pick one of them. I have to pick both of them. Because together, together, they won okay. the World Cup. They won the Euros. They won the Champions League, the League, the Cup. They won everything possible in club football, domestic football and international football. They won the lot. So they have to be together. And that's Xavi and Iniesta. They won it all. They won no it one all. Can do, you can't really debate it. But go on, Brian. If you take yeah. one out... If you take one out, the other one don't work. They're a package. Yeah, a I know, I know, I know. If I, if I had to do the best, we started this off as the best eleven, and you can't argue with Stell. But if we then you said a minute ago, your favourite and what you'd like to see. Yeah, and for me, well, the, best midfield, by, well, the best Gaza midfield, com, the best midfield combination, the best midfield combination I saw uh, growing up. But they played for England. I'm not. I'm choosing one of these people. I'm going to add another to it. Euro 96, the time with Gazza and Ince, that midfield partnership was the best English midfield partnership I've ever seen. They were, they had everything. But I'm going to take, if this was my favourite, this is my favourite, I would take out Paul Ince and replace him with Stephen Gerrard. I would have loved to have seen Gazza and Gerrard together. Them two together would have been something fucking different. They would have had the lot. I, listen, I don't need to go on about my love for Paul Gascoigne. It's very well known. But Stephen right. Gerrard, Stephen Gerrard right. was yeah. Would you would you consider instead of Stephen Gerrard, um, Stambouli? <laughs> mate, you know I used to <laughs> mate. My nickname for Stambouli was FIFA, and the reason I called him FIFA is if you ever saw him live, which you would have still. You know when he pushed the triangle low for speed, and when they're knackered, they're like <laughs> that was Stambouli after about two yards. So I used to call Stambouli <laughs> FIFA. <laughs> so I used to call Stambouli <laughs> FIFA. Um, but, but yeah, you know, I, I think Gaza, I think Gaza and Gerard would have had the lot together. I mean, this is where this one is going to be virtually impossible to do. I mean, because for me, you, I might as well have put him out a bit as well. But Zidane has got to be on there. You, you cannot have the team with no Zidane on there. But I totally get what you're saying here as well. Still, them two together is the best. They've won everything. Been in that way. They've won everything. I know. But if I'm going to go by my favourite, Zidane has got to be in that middle somewhere for me. He's got to be. He's got to be. You cannot leave. You Surely you cannot leave Zidane out of this. He's won everything as well. He's actually won everything as well. Euros, yeah, World he's Cup, a football god, club, isn't he, country. Zidane? And he's done it as a mm -hmm. manager as well. Let me take out, sorry, let me just take out Gerard and put Zidane in. So Gazza and Zidane. Gazza and Zidane. I've got a weird shout here. I've got Mateus and Zidane because Mateus is bloody Not defensive bad. and Not Zidane bad. is really attacking. Oh, I've just remembered Lothar Mateus. Jesus Christ, what yeah, a player. Yeah. He had the name. Jason well. Dazelle. <laughs> Jason Dazelle. Oh, my I God. Mean, another, another midfielder, <laughs> like you day. say, with the style yeah, of play yeah. you want to play, yeah. I'd want my 4 4 2 sort of going into a diamond and switching about. I still think another very underrated player. Again, more of a, I wouldn't say modern day player, but I thought Schweinsteiger was a quality player as well. He was oh, another one who he I was really, fantastic. he was one that I rated very, very highly. Now, if you're if you're if you're going to talk about a centre mid, out and out proper centre mid, <clears throat> I think the best I've ever seen, just as an individual player, is Lope Mateus. As an out and out, he was mid. he was yeah. incredible. Italian ninety. Yeah, him, right. him and Gaza were above everyone in that World Cup. Mateus and Gaza. Forget it. Oh, forget mate, it. Right. Empty, right. Forget it. So, one of our midfielders, I think we're all going to agree, it's got to be Mateus. I totally agree with what you said still, but, yeah, Mateus has got to be in there. So, I'm going to go with Zidane and Mateus. But Mateus is in there. The so gets... Patrick Vieira, he won everything as well. Oh, mate, Vieira. Arsenal's gone. Doesn't, mate, it doesn't seem, There's another one. You, no, you, you, you know what? I, Charlie, 
I used to be like that when uh, yeah, he won yeah, the play for Arsenal. I, I could go, honestly, but, but I, Patrick, you got to remember when Patrick Vieira came to to the Premier League, we we were still going Arsene who then it was Vieira and Petit who mm. Vieira. I swear to God, and this is when I keep speaking about Paulinho and people go on about, oh, we'll pick up enough suspensions. I don't want him. We'll get. Do you think yeah. Arsenal fans were moaning and bitching about uh, Vieira being suspended? Patrick, no. I'd rather have Patrick Vieira for the 30 games he played than the eight he may have missed. Patrick Same. Vieira was another literally... Player. Oh. What a player. An- another player I would love in my team. Roy Keane. Yeah. Mate, yes. you know what? In that debate, I'm actually, I'd rather Vieira. I'd actually yeah, rather Vieira. Vieira was better overall. Vieira was better. It's just Roy Keane Technically just got better. a soft spot in that. Oh, Davis, we haven't even mentioned David. Davis, I can't say Leckies. Just mentioned Pirlo. How has Pirlo mean. not even got a mention? And also, I mean, Michel Platini. Yeah. Michel Platini I mean. was a fabulous footballer That's why well. I just went with a combination, man. <laughs> but this is the thing, Stel. You look at it and we're talking Real. about this. I think it just goes to show when we started this conversation as well, we're talking about who's world-class right now and mm-hmm. how people say it too easy. These players that we have mentioned all quite easily... Going yeah, to the world class yeah. tier without even a debate. Without yeah, even this, a debate. This is part of why I've done this. Yeah. Because it is what I was going to go to. Apart from Messi and Ronaldo, no one has really. Okay, Bale mentioned a modern. We haven't even mentioned Luke Modric. We haven't even mentioned Maradona. We haven't even mentioned Maradona. You know what I mean? Well, we haven't gone Maradona's up that class. way yet. That's what I'm saying. I mean, another Where's one that someone's just said here who I thought was an excellent player. Claude Makalele. Makalate. Makalele, I presume Macalate. you mean. Makalate. Yeah. Makalate. <laughs> Close enough, but it's, and, it's and, virtually and impossible Tom, to do this, isn't it? Colo Kante was a fabulous... Oh, oh what a holding mid, man. Colo Kante. Colo Kante was fabulous. He, he redefined the role. He redefined the role. But you know what? He's one of look every at, blade of grass, that player. I look at what Davis has said, said here. Pirello, I could put him in over Mateus personally for me. Yeah. No, Mateus is better. Yeah, but, he was. But Pirello was an outstanding Mate, player. N'Golo Kante has won league titles at two different clubs in the Premier League. And he's won the Euros and the Champions League and the World Cup. N'Golo yeah. Kante is below the radar, man. He's a top, top player. And go top player, man. Top and what's player, Rob man. saying here? Hang on a sec. Rob Belcher, how you doing, mate? It was good to have a talk right, with you Rob. yesterday. I hope you're doing fine. Big what up, Rob. great panel. And cool Stelios. <laughs> Young Charlie is a great <laughs> addition. His knowledge is outstanding. Big up. So that's a big up to big you up, there, Charlie. Rob. And Thanks, that is man. why I have you on here. And that is why when, I do say when, you start your own channel, you will get the help off of everybody on here and 100% Spurs people we know because you know what you're talking Thanks, about. Man. Well, yeah. Google knows what you're talking about. I'll be about, your first so. subscriber. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking you know everything up, guys. Should, we should yeah. call him, we should call him um, Siri Charlie. <laughs> so, if Matthias is in there, who is our Siri other Charlie. man? For me, it's got to be Zidane. Zidane. The rest... I'm choosing Zidane. Because even so, though Hoddle, right, was fantastic, yeah, uh, the Dan was just there, there was something about he, he had an air of arrogance, he knew what he, he was all about. He, he was the bollocks and he knew it, he strutted his stuff <laughs> to the point where they were losing and he thought, Stuff it, I just headbutt the fella and walked off. <laughs> yeah, he didn't care less. <laughs> he got sent off, didn't he? Because he called him, no... he called him, and he called his motherfucker, That's... he goes, yeah, You're a motherfucker. Was... <laughs> and then it was three nil down anyway, so he didn't care. But so you know, Mateus you know is what? our one man. Who still? Who's your other man? I've said Zidane. She said Zidane. No, it has to be Zidane because it like, does, doesn't it? The 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 the, the, the 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 ball was like glued to the guy's foot, to his chest. Yeah. And I know there's other players that had that, blue stuff. That goal he scored in the like that Ronaldinho. goal he scored. Amazing. But do you know what amazed me with, one, with Zidane? For such a big lad, such a big unit that he was, yeah. his balance was unbelievable. He was like a ballerina, man. Yeah. Like the guy was yeah. in ridiculous talent. When do you ever see a big player like that with that kind of balance? It's just... He must have taken ballet Pete, lessons, Pete, I reckon. Peter <laughs> Crouch. That, 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 that'll drop Peter Crouch. Get out of here. Yeah. Fucking hell. <laughs> well, you've got to so admit, for his size, he could actually control the ball. 
Yeah, <laughs> I mean, he was. He Zidane could bend, turn, change direction. You yes. know, you know, some players they they glide across the pitch. Yeah, that and was Zidane him. was one of them. You know, he's it, so graceful with when he receives the ball. Sublime, mm, fantastic sublime. footballer. Sublime. sublime. Yeah. So we're gonna go with that one. Everyone's going to have to say Zidane on that. So it's Lofar yeah. Mateus and Zidane in midfield. Now, yeah. now Lofa is where it gets tricky. Oh, now yeah. is where it gets top hard. Two. Who are our two stop two strikers? Okay, Charlie, I'll let you. Start. Pele, Ronaldo, Rosario. What's that? Pele, Ronaldo, Rosario. Okay, quick and easy as that, Brian. <laughs> yeah, listen, no, I, I think R nine. Walks in, but I, I, I have to be true to myself, and I'm going to say why. I, Thierry Henry, I'm. Listen, we 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 got to see him at very very close quarters, and the thing I, thing I loved and hated about Henry because obviously the the Tottenham roots, is when you watched him, you just didn't know what to do with him. If you if you stayed close to him, it will just You're beat screwed. you for sheer pace. If you stand off him, it will just look. You look. You just got to look at go. You look at that invincible season. And you just got to look at that goal against Liverpool when they were losing and Thierry Henry, when the going got tough and you say, right, I need a man to stand up and be counted. On where he Thierry, got going. Thierry Henry, it, goals from outside the area, individual, team goals, headers. This guy would, you give him a fraction, 0.01% of the, the goal where he, could, where he could find the net, he'll find it. I hated him. But loved the passion. way he played football at the same team. He, honestly, he. We, we we have a lot of people that would always say, "Oh, Arsenal players, they're shit, they're shit, they're shit," just because we support Tottenham Hotspur. But Thierry Henry is one of the greatest strikers I've ever seen ever. Um, he was unbelievable, and I have to go with You're Charlie. Right, I have to go with R nine. He's my. But um, but yeah, Thierry Henry, unbelievable, unbelievable player. Still, your opinions on this? Oh, well, big shout out to Paul McVeigh as well. I want to get Paul McVeigh in there. We got Paul McVeigh. <laughs> um, look, this is out of all the positions, this is the easiest one because we're just sport for choice. So, uh, my first one, uh, Helder Postiga <laughs> and Jansen. What a, what a player! Prolific. <laughs> Prolific. <laughs> <laughs> one, one of the greatest <laughs> strikers to grace, yeah, probably Postiga and Gordon Jury. Them two, fucking brilliant. Mate, I don't get the jury oh. hate. I loved Gordon Jury. Nah, Tottie and Rao. Tottie and Rao. Tottie and Rao. Wow. I, I actually I actually agree with David Davis Leckes, Pele and R9. They're the two best ever up front. It's hard to, I mean, for me, I mean, this is just biased on my side. Batty Shooter would be in my team, and I don't care, mate. Batty Shooter would be in my team. If I had Batty to Batty goal. But if I'm going to do it realistically so my players can get into this team, yeah, we all know Maradona, we all know this and that, but we're doing personal ones here. If I could just choose my front two, I would go for Omri and Batty Shooter. And Ibrahimovic was one I loved. Excellent player. Another one who I think got underrated in a lot of ways. For me, but R9 as well, how can you go without that? It's practically impossible to get this one right. You can't, in some ways, you can't get it wrong even. Thierry Henry has to go in it, as far as I'm concerned. Dan, serious? I, you'd, you'd, put, you'd put Henry ahead of Werner? <laughs> Henry, I've got to go What's with the point? What's the point? I despised him. <laughs> Arsenal have got two of my all-time favourite players, and that's Vieira and Henri. And look, at the end of the day, if you, if you know anything about football, you got a bit. When you're good, you're good. You're bad, you're bad. When you're fucking good, yeah, you're bad. Henri was different class. Oh, wait a minute. How can I have forgotten? And I have to say a big shout-out to Stoke on Trent Spurs fan. Jimmy Greaves has to get... If Jimmy Greaves... Yeah. You just look at his goal-scoring Muller. record... Yeah, mate, listen, Mola. Jimmy Greaves, listen, you speak to any Spurs fan, any Spurs fan of that era, and they will, if we were doing this back in that era, we had to pick players from that era, Jimmy Greaves, how could we leave him out? Is he better? How could I do this? How Brian? could I just do this? Hang on a sec. How could I just do this? Oh, Fieri, I love Fieri. Ben Foster. 
<laughs> I should block you for that, mate, because you've just made you've just made life hard for me now. Christian Vieri. Vieri. How the hell could I forget about him? One of my all time favourites. Christian Vieri, what a player, what a striker. Oh, yeah. mate, you've just what? made that hard for me now. Whether I go, whether I go Batistuta or Vieri, either mate, way, I'm on reason you know, there for me. One of my one of my favourite strikers, and I'm just talking Premier League era. I'm just talking yeah, yeah. Premier League era and everything. One of my um, my my favourite strikers, just for his time, and it was his time at Liverpool, was Fernando Torres. The time he was at Liverpool, he was absolutely extraordinary. He and was during his career to go to Chelsea. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what, what about Tony Cotty? Tony Cotty, anyone? No, mate. Do you know what? Talking to Tony Cotty, when uh, I was back in England and the World Cup was on, I went with Ben and Simeon to the Iran game at one of these football places where they play them on the big screen, like these fan centers. Yeah. And they said they're having ex England internationals to come and uh, do interviews and shit. And like the headliner, this shows how poor the, the headliner was Tony, <laughs> Tony Cotty. Cotty. The oh headline, my god. The headline oh, was dear. Tony Cotty. Guys, so we're forgetting Johan Cruyff. You can say yeah. the reach. You can see the Tony, reach of uh, Tony Cotty yeah. and, Dean, and and special guest Dean Saunders. Hey. Mate, Dean Saunders hey. is hysterical. Never mate, Dean Sta <laughs> Dean Saunders is hysterical. Right. I mean another great striker. Uh oh, I thought he was brilliant when he was on his day. Samueto. Yeah. Yeah. Top Cruyff oh, he was an excellent. Player. Yeah, Adrian Cruyff. 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 Mate, well, yo, mate, Johan Cruyff. How is he not in this team? He's one of the greatest footballers ever. ever. I know. Yeah. He's, got, he's got a whole move named after him. We've Cruyff, got Cruyff. 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 Red herring, right? No, I've now, just sent you a Dean Saunders video. Yeah? So I'm going to go. Oh, well, check the Eric Dyer one. one quickly. Burkamp. I've seen it. I've seen the Eric Dyer. It's funny. Very nice. Lovely. Very nice. Go on, Ellie. I'm going to go Dennis Burkamp and Thierry Henry. In the, in, in the invincible team, no one can touch him. Dennis Burkamp scored a goal against away. Leicester that was absolutely brilliant. I remember yeah. he took it on the half turn and he okay. left the defender for dead. And he just chipped it. It was so brilliant. Yeah, but I as an out and out striker, do that in, the, in the in English football is Kenny Dalglish with his back to goal it was a bit like Dennis Burkamp. But Dennis Burkamp had extra skills that Kenny Dalglish okay. didn't have. But as an out and out striker, Burkamp don't come in it for me. No, as a regular but I'm talking scorer. about combinations. Yeah, you said, right. Who who yeah. would be your favourite players to watch? When I used mm. to watch Bergkamp and Henri together, they complemented each other so well. Ellie, even even, even Bergkamp well. and Wright, well, even Bergkamp and Wright, even Bergkamp and Wright, yeah. Um, yeah. Bergkamp was an exceptional talent and this another player we had in the, baller. another player we had at the training ground and uh, yeah. that was Sugar, not Levy, go. but another guy we had. And he's a bloody Spurs fan. He's a Spurs fan. Can I tell you something? Right, it's a little bit left field. <clears throat> I've just done a quick Google, right? The, mm -hmm. the worst ever Premier League strikers. And there's a list of 20. <laughs> I bet it's just 22%. 20, 20, sorry, right. 22%. Give me five minutes. 20% of the list are Spurs. Yeah. <laughs> we're, we're, we make up right. the majority of the list. So I've got at least room cut one this short soon. I've got to cut this short soon because my wife wants the kitchen back, and I was only meant to be on for an hour or so with uh, Charlie and Ellie. <laughs> you never last an hour, with Dan. <laughs> That's that not what my wife says. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go, Ellie, Ellie, just, Ellie, 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 mudding the wall. Ellie just Here said, Ellie just said, know, I never Ellie last an hour, like, and I said, so That's innocent. not what you say. <laughs> she looks so innocent, and then she's just got this spite to her. <laughs> I'm a bit she's just got yeah. to her. I grew up with boys, so I'm quite corrupted. <laughs> I mean, my wife says I'm good at 90 minutes and then the energy's gone and then that's it. But still. No extra time. <laughs> no, not tonight, mate. The snooker's on. <laughs> no penalties. Oh, definitely not. That hurts. Right. So I'd say Henri has definitely got to go in there. Do we all agree with that? Yeah. Me, yeah. No. Right, so that's three, no. So that's no. three over two. It's not the greatest. Three over two. No, some of these ain't the greatest of all time, but it is opinion. So, right, all we've right. gone Henri. Who is our other man to go up there? 
R9. R9. Razor Razia. Razor Razia. You've got to put R9 in. Even though so Chris Armstrong. Chris Armstrong. Chris Armstrong. Would you take Cruyff over Thierry Henry? Chris Armstrong. Yes. No, for me, Thierry Henry's got to be in there. Rory Allen. He's a winger. Mate, Cruyff was fucking... Cruyff was a winger. Yeah, but Cruyff though. wasn't a striker. He was a he winger. He was centre forward. He wasn't a centre forward. No, he was a winger. He did play there a bit. He was not he a centre forward. He, he, played, he either played as a number 10 or on the wing. Mm. Is there is there such a thing as a we've got to pull oh, we've got to get we, said, we forgot about Werner. We got to get Werner. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, put him in. Fuck it. Well, okay, we, might, we might be able to add Martial into that in our ranks next season. So uh, hold fire, hold fire. If if Martial right. comes to Spurs, I'm done. I'm I've told you, Stel. If we get a here, we go on Martial. I'm done. Within the hour, you'll get a Daigle. Here we go with me having a ticket back to London. <laughs> it's that simple. Yeah. It's that simple. I mean, start them. I don't care if I'm standing out the training ground by myself. If Anthony Martial signs for Tottenham, I will set up camp outside the training ground. Let's make a okay. let's make a road football right. club. Right, come on, hang on a sec, because I've only got about three minutes now. MK Dons, um, slightly. So, yeah, right. Henri, who is our other striker? I can go with Croy for R nine. It's between you four. R nine, Saldado. <laughs> Well, no, I'm going to put, put Cruyff in. I'll pick Cruyff. Okay, Cruyff. So the team we've come together with, obviously not gone for favourites. So we've gone more for favourites. That was the idea of what yeah. I was trying to do here. We'll as well. So on a 4-4-2, we've got Buffon. Dan, Dan sorry, before yeah. you read it out, can we pick a manager as well, please? Ah, You know yeah. what? That's not a bad idea. Yeah. Mm. We'll see if you <laughs> And so, Red go on then, still. Blue. Seeing as you come up with the idea, go on then, mate. We got we got to talk about a manager now, so I need another five minutes. And then the oh, subs bench, God. and then the assistant manager. Then oh, captain. Shit, I forgot about that, Brian. Then we need captain <laughs> and subs bench. I'm sorry, it just takes long. And sponsor, name of stadium. <laughs> Brian. I'd, okay, up, I'd like to. I'd like to put forward. <laughs> I'd like to put forward. Um, Jacques Santini. That's exactly what I was going to say, Stel, bro. Uh, sorry, uh, okay, okay, I'll take you. I'll take you. No, no, don't I'm worry, go I've got for... a long list. We've got a long list. You go with Santini. I was going to go Jerry Francis, Christian Gross, Nuno Spirito I was gonna, Still, shut up. Christian right, Gross. Man. That is what I was going to say, I, Christian I Gross. Ticket. I have a ticket. <laughs> I've seen no, the listen. managers Tottenham have had. Who said that? Oh, I've seen I'm, I'm going to be a Spurs manager, around. that's for sure. But come on, then, who is our man? Who is our I'm top manager of all time Ferguson. for you? Okay, okay. I'm, I'm, I'm going to go for the man who is the pioneer, arguably the inventor of Tiki Taka, what it's called today, the original possession based manager that created all of this. We can argue it all day. 1951 Spurs manager. Arthur Sidney Rowe. He yeah. is the goat, man. He is the he started all of this, but we but we did fuck all with it because that's the club that we are. But we do we ever I'm gonna go I'm gonna go Arthur <laughs> Sidney Rowe, and you can all hate me for saying that. There you go. No, he is the original is tiki taka, the original push and run man. I mean, for me, manager is manager is a struggle here because it is different. Oh, the <laughs> they do say like Ferguson was what Ferguson was, but the only reason I put Ferguson down a level or two is because all right, he got Man U to where they were, but he stayed at Man U the whole time when it was almost easy for him. The things I respect about Mourinho, Pep, and Gelotti is they went everywhere or a lot of different places and done yeah, it. Fergie, got the sack. <laughs> Fergie done it, and he made Man U. No two ways about sack. it. <laughs> and what he did was excellent, and that I still think it's one of the easy. best managers ever that I have seen. I still got to say Jose Mourinho is up there. But it's not easy to keep rebuilding and rebuilding and rebuilding. No, team, I agree. Which, which Fergie did, but yeah. players it when it comes to United, it had like this. And what this a great young team Everyone wants to go to United. What a great young team, Alex Ferguson. Nurtured. Brian Clough. Brilliant. Brian Clough. But he, Brian Clough. But, but he also, Brilliant. But he also, Good manager. Brian, yeah. But he, but he also signed players that anyone else could have got, but nobody knew, like Sanji Park. You know, he signed players like, um, who's that? Who's that skinny 
guy that played on the wing. I forgot his name. Skinny dude. Uh, Darren Anderson. No, no Darren no. Anderson wasn't skinny. <laughs> What's his name? Uh, I think he was um, Portuguese. Ronaldo? Oh, oh no, Nanny. No, no. Nanny. 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 It plays like Nanny. Oh, right. Nanny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he discovered against players us when the referee copped Mate, up. Andre Kanchelskis. Andre Kanchelskis. Yeah. So he didn't yeah. he didn't just get all these superstars to Man United. No, I know that. I do he's a quality he's manager, well, but the only reason I rate Mourinho and Pop Pep and that is because they have done it in different countries. I mean, if well, you Ancelotti's done better Ancelotti's done better than both of them too. That's what I was about yeah. to say. Angelotti is another yeah. call because how many times he won the Champions League now? What, three or four? Mate, he's the first ever manager. I think he's won it five. He's the first ever manager. AC Milan. Knock out Pep Guardiola out of the Champions League three times. First manager yeah. to do that. Yeah, yeah for, me, for me, it's a tough one yeah. between uh, Steve Koppel and Dr. Joe Venglos from Steve Aston Villa. Koppel. Right. <laughs> and people, and Steve and Koppel. Dr. Just, I'm, I'm going to have and to Dr. say, Joe Venglos, a manager. Oh, the Reverend Dr. Joe Venglos of Villa. A manager. Um, look, this is who we're going to go with. I'm going to have to say Steve this. Christian Koppel. Gross is... Right, so Christian Gross is going to be our manager. End of. So, <laughs> so I have Kifu, a ticket. Maldini, Baresi... Beckenbauer, Buffon, Bale, Zidane, Matthias, Figo, Henri, <laughs> and Croy. Right, Brian, where do we find you in the very near future? <laughs> you, you find me a lot on We Are Tottenham TV, but the home of Daigle is obviously Tottenham on tour. Um, trying to get bits and pieces done, but obviously with what I'm going through at the moment, I can't say when and where. But Ben and Dave are doing all they can, as well as Johnny with Angel Management. When I can't make it, there's someone with him. But yeah, you'll find me on Tottenham on tour. Okay, still? Yes, you can find me 5pm today on Tottenham away. I'm doing a solo show, not a long one, called Levy Has Fooled Spurs Fans Again. And I'm going to... Again. Has he fooled me still? Not you. Not you. Okay. Okay. Just one of my... <laughs> Definitely not you. Um, it's going to be all the evidence to prove exactly what he's done the last 10 years and how he's mugged us all off. And then uh, 9.30 p.m. tonight, Car Crash TV. North London is ours. We are going to absolutely go after those Arsenal fans. And <laughs> Stefan, oh you better, God. you better turn up tonight. And Connor and TJ, the lot of you, you better turn up. And make sure and make sure you bring your lube with you because it's going to be rough. Charlie. Yeah. You can find rough. me on X, Instagram, and I'm going to start a YouTube all Charlie Spurs N17. Go, oh, Charlie. Um, God, I'm pretty Charlie. I'm, I'm pretty active on X. I'm not that active on Instagram, but I'm going to try to start to make some YouTube. Just got to get over that hurdle of making the videos because mm -hmm. I'm still at school. All this stuff, it's pretty hard to do all this stuff. Yeah, take your time, but we know you're still, doing it. And you'll be why, on why aren't you at school well. now, Charlie? Why aren't you I've school got a study now? day today. Like I've got a free day. So I'll, I'll just... yeah, honestly, Charlie, I'll tell you something. I'll tell, <laughs> good, good, I'll good tell you study, something, Charlie. Good yeah, study. but still, still, you and me aren't really wants to talk about. I'll tell you a little story what me and Stel used no, no, to do. No, no. <laughs> no, I ain't got the time. I ain't no, got no, the time, No, take two minutes. Literally two. We used to literally, my school was about 30 second walk from my house. Kids, don't do this if you're watching. I used to walk around no. the block, and by the time I got back, both my parents had left for work, go back in the house, and people like Stel and everyone would come around to my house, and we would order pizzas and play Mario Kart all day. They were great oh, study dear. days. Um, kids go to school or you turn out like me and still. <laughs> there you go. All right, Ellie. Yeah, right. So everybody knows you can find me at Just the Girl Who Loves Spurs. And if you don't know, get to know. <laughs> right. Okay. And then I've been given my own slot on El Tel Cockerell. And tomorrow I'm interviewing, I'm having on the Irish Hotspur, Dave. Okay. So I'm really excited about that. Oh, sounds funny. And this. also, another thing. I'm going to start up my own channel as well as Charlie. It's going to be Spurs R Us Unleashed, where you're going to mm -hmm. see the real Ellie Unleashed. Okay. Yeah. I don't know if I look forward to it. <laughs> I, I maybe I'm a bit scared. But right, and yeah. then just for mine, now don't say this very often during it. Please give me a like and subscribe. It always does help. I'll be doing more shows in the future. And still, I look forward to tonight, mate. That's going to be fun. Everyone, like and subscribe. Take care. Have a good day. Fun.